Alan Lukoski is suing business owner Gene Clun for a semi-automatic rifle. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Hello, Judge. Case 2055, Lukoski versus Clun. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Lukoski, am I correct that you own or manage a shooting range? Yes, it's a target range that's on my own property that I own in northern Minnesota. And it's licensed to do commercial target shooting? Not necessarily. What I do is... What is not necessarily? What does that mean? Well, for 19 years, I have been a firearms instructor for the permits to carry for the sheriff's department in my county. Okay. So I don't believe that the training is good enough that the people are getting to be able to carry handguns on the street. So I give them a free additional training session at my range. You also sell guns? I do not sell guns, no. I, I, How do you make money, is my question. So I give money by charging people for the class. Well, that's what I'm talking You charge people yes. to use. And you don't need a license to run that sort of operation in your county. No, you have to be a registered NRA instructor, which is also, you know... Like Are you? you? Yes, I am, ma'am. For how long? Oh, I've been doing this for 19 years. The case is really not very complicated, but let me see if I can break it down to its most basic elements. There was a gentleman who regularly came to your range. Yes. And his first name was... Jim. How long had he been coming to your range? A couple of years, at least. And then, according to what you indicate in your complaint, and Mr. Clun doesn't deny it, he got sick. And according to you, the nature of his illness, you felt prevented him from using a heavier weapon. Yes, ma'am. And so you loaned to him, because of his illness, a rifle. Yes, ma'am. What kind of rifle did you loan? It was a uh, sporting rifle. It was very lightweight. What kind? It was called a PS90. That was the model. PS90. P.S. is in Sam, 90. Would you take a look at that, Sarah, please? I have a picture, uh, Your Honor, if you'd like to see one. I would. It's very unusual. Thank you. Okay. May I see it? Thank you. And on approximately what month and year did you loan Jim this gun? Well... <sighs> well is not an answer, so let's think carefully, because okay. we know we're coming... Probably uh, a month approximately before he died, which well, was September. Well, I don't know September. when that was. September 8th, I believe, he passed away in 2021. How did you find out that he passed away? I believe Mary here, who's here because of the fact that she care gave for him while he was going through cancer treatments, she was his reason for staying alive. And she also did witness uh, some things uh, that happened in this case. Okay, I'll get to you in a second. So he passed away on November 8th. He died on September 9th. 9th. Yeah. Excuse okay. Me. And, and, okay. Prior to his passing away, Jim and Mr. Clun had some business deal. And Mr. Clun believed that Jim owed him money. So far, right? Correct. And after Jim died, Mr. Clun went to Jim's home and took several things from the home to satisfy that debt. No, I did not do that, Your Honor. I never came back to the house. I never took anything. Everything I received, I received prior to to his death. Okay. Tell me when you received the gun that belonged to Mr. Lukoski. Looks like 5-20-21. Can I see what you have that indicates that you received the gun in May because you gave it to him about a month before he died? Approximately a month. Well. Could have been a little longer. It had to be longer. Okay. I picked it up the fifth month. In May? Yes. Okay, and you couldn't have given it to him in August. Yeah, you're right. It had to be before then. Okay. And tell me the circumstances, because that's what this case is about. Mr. Lukoski claims that it was his gun. It was a loan. You had no right because you took it. You got it, evidently, you want to tell me, from Jim, and then subsequently sold it. Yes. Yes. Okay. So I want you to tell me the circumstances surrounding your getting possession of this gun in May of 2021. Jim was in need of money, so I loaned him money, and in trade for the money as collateral, he said he would... Okay. And I'm going to let you tell me this because Jim's not here, so I'm right. going to have to get more specifics from people who were his caregivers to buttress what you're saying to me. He needed some money. How did you know him? Best friends from high school. And you remained friends? 
Yes. How did you find out that Jim needed money? Jim called me up, and he was getting scammed, but he wanted the money, and he told me... He, he was getting me... scammed by whom? I don't know who it was. But anyway, I would give him $2,500. He would go to the post office and mail it somewhere. But every time he did that, I would receive collateral of motorcycles just, or guns. Just a second. I want you to run this by me. Jim called you and said, I'm being scammed? No, no. <laughs> I think he's being scammed. I don't care what you think. OK, OK. And what you think is unimportant to me. I want you to tell me the circumstances surrounding the money that you gave to him. He called you and said... He needed to borrow money. I borrowed him the money. No, no. I need to borrow money. Had you ever loaned him money before? Yes. Often? No. In the last year of his life, I did probably a half a dozen times. Just in the last year. So when he called you and said, I need to borrow some money, the reaction, even from a best friend, would be, of course, if you need money, tell me why. Right? That's a natural question. And so that's what you asked him. Tell me why. And I asked him that question, and he said he was going to be receiving a million or two million dollars in the next few months. OK. So you brought Mr. Lukoski's gun back to Jim while he was alive? No, I sold the gun. Keep going. So you sold... This was still... Just tell the truth. You don't have to have a good memory. Alan Lukoski claims business owner Gene Clun owes for a semi-automatic rifle. So, did you ask him how? I asked him how, and he said he had it all planned with this guy he was sending the money to. That's all he told you about it? Or did he go into specifics? You, 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 he did, it he, had to sound interesting to you, Mr. Clun, because if my best friend called me and said, I need to borrow some money, and I said, tell me why, and she said, because I'm going to come into a million dollars shortly, but I need to borrow money to get it to this guy before I get the million dollars. I would say, explain that to me. And I did. And he said... And he said... He said that he would be receiving money in the next month or two months. Mr. Klun, then you would say, how does that And Can I get in on it? <laughs> you know, if I'm sending you $2,500, which is what you said you gave him... I would say, oh, gee, 2500 bucks that's a reasonable investment. And I'm going to get a return on my money of a million dollars shortly? I would say, is there any piece of that for me? I didn't question him. He just wanted the money, and he said in return for the money, he would give me the motorcycles and guns as collateral. OK. May I please see the written agreement that you had? Verbal. So, other than you and Jim, nobody knew about this agreement? Not that I'm aware of. Now, when was the first time you gave him money? Looks like, uh, May. May? Of 2021. OK. When was the last time you gave him money? 7 6 21. Between May of 2021 and the beginning of July, how many times did you give him money? Four times. And you have that documented with bank records, et cetera? Right here, Your Honor. OK, great. And tell me how much in total you gave him. $7,500. Kevin, would you bring me the documents that Mr. Clun is looking at, please? So in total, you gave him $7,500. And in return, according to you, you took possession of how many motorcycles? Three motorcycles. And they belonged to Jim? And he signed over the titles and everything to me. Well, they were collateral. Right. But he signed over everything and gave me the titles for everything. Can I see the titles to the motorcycles? They're sold, ma'am. Interesting. As well as the rifles that I got Jeff, also. I'm just asking you, yeah. do you have the sales receipts from the three motorcycles? There were three? Did you say three? Yeah. Do you have the sales receipts from the three motorcycles that you say you sold? No, but I was paid $5,000 in cash for the three How am I supposed to know that, sir? Okay, you sold well, three anyway, motorcycles. I, OK, OK. How am I supposed to know? I mean, all of this is coming out of nowhere, actually, with no proof whatsoever, unless you're prepared to give me some flesh on this bone of a case. Could you stand up? Your first name is Mary? Yes, it is. What's your last name? Wellman. 
Were you Jim's caregiver? Yes, I lived at, uh, in the upstairs of his house. Were you a tenant? We were friends since the late 90s when I first moved to the area. So regular caregiver of his, or were you just um, as needed? He developed cancer in the late 90s, and I stayed, then I lived with him in the first two years because of the 50-50 survival rate and the constant trips to the Mayo Clinic from where we lived were an entire day trip. And then after about three years, when he was kind of back on his feet again, I moved out, but we remained friends and we rode motorcycles together and we did lots together. And so I you back actually, in. so you lived in the house? Yeah, and I moved back in, in okay. Okay. Were you living in the house when he bought these three motorcycles? Two of them I was. Um, uh, a dual sport that he had changed or upgraded to ride a little bit more rough terrain, possibly, into Canada. Okay, just to... Okay. I, yeah. That That's much, why that much that flesh on the bones I don't okay, need. Okay, I'm sorry. Did he buy them new or used? He had bought them used... In approximately what year? Well, would have been during the cancer, and so it... Approximately 2000 to okay. 2003. Do you know anything else about his dealings with Mr. I Kwan? I do know the motorcycles were in the garage when Jim died. No, they weren't. Don't. don't okay. Don't speak. How do you know that? Well, I had on and off go out there for things, but to then Jim's nephew had come and removed one of the bikes right after. Jim had passed away. So the nephew came and removed one. Mm -hmm. But this was after he passed. Yes. What's the nephew's first name? Anthony. Do you know Anthony, Mr. Klun? Yes, I do. Okay. Did you get the motorcycle from Anthony? Nope. I got the motorcycles from Jim. The motorcycles that were left after Jim Just passed away. Okay. Now you can sit down. Okay. All right, Mr. Klun. Do you have any statements, text messages, or anything else indicating that Jim indicated to you that he could give you as collateral this rifle, other than the fact that he had it in his possession? I got more than one rifle. I have checks that were written out to Jim, and that's what we did. But that doesn't answer my question, Mr. Klun. I don't care how many rifles you have. He only had one that he gave to Jim because it was lighter and easier to shoot. And as his illness progressed, if I'm getting this right, it was hard for him to pick up his own rifle. Now, he may have had more, probably did have more, because you took more than one, right? Correct. OK. How many rifles did you take? I took three rifles, five pistols. I had to bring three of the rifles back. Where? To Jim to get replacements. The guns that were from Mr. Lakoski. Only one? Three of them. No, he said he only gave him one. Oh, no, but th there was three of them. <laughs> so you brought Mr. Lakoski's gun back to Jim while he was alive? No, I sold the gun. Keep going. You sold... Uh, this was still... Just... Tell the truth, you don't have to have a good memory. If, heaven forbid, something happened to me and my dentist thought that I owed him $25,000, he couldn't come into my house and say, gee, this Ming vase is just going to cover my dental bill. You can't do that. And that's what you did. Alan Lukoski is accusing business owner Gene Klun of selling his semi-automatic rifle without permission. Keep going. So you sold it. You didn't take it back to him to get a replacement. No, you missed... To Jim. You misunderstood. The gun that Mr. Lakoski had, I kept that one. The one that belongs to Mr. Lakoski, you sold it. Correct, because... I, he... So, just a second. Sold it to whom? The gun dealer in Virginia, Minnesota. Great. And for that, you have a receipt. Yes. I'd like to see it. I, I left it at home. Oh. Your Honor, I... Oh, have Mr. Klun. Oh, Mr. he Klun, had the right let, there. Let Mr. Klun, he doesn't have to prove anything to me. I believe that you resorted to self-help to claim a debt. If, if it's true and you did, in fact, give him money, I actually don't believe that a guy like you would give him all this money without trying to find out what the scam was or at least tell him, Jim, it sounds to me like you're being scammed. Somebody in Transylvania sent you an email 
that said, a long distant relative of yours died and left you a million dollars. I need $2,500 in order to clear the paperwork to send you a million dollars. And I will keep a little piece for myself for finding you. <laughs> you know how many of those everybody gets? I don't know why people still believe that, but you evidently believed that story four times. And not once did you say your friend who was dying of cancer, Jim, this is ridiculous. What you're doing is just throwing good money after bad. I don't understand why you didn't say that to him, or if you did, you would not have said to him, unless you had something to gain, which clearly you did, you sold the motorcycles. You don't have any proof of what you sold them for. You expect me to take your word for the fact that you sold them for $5,000 in cash without proof. He owed you, if I were to believe you and these checks, $7,500. You sold the motorcycles. You sold guns. But unfortunately, one of the things that you sold belonged to the plaintiff. And when somebody dies, there is an estate. There's a judge who decides what property there is. You know, if, heaven forbid, something happened to me and my dentist thought that I owed him $25,000, he couldn't come into my house and say, gee, I like this Ming vase. This Ming vase is just going to cover my dental bill. You can't do that. And that's what you did. You sold property. You may have had a claim against his estate if he, in fact, owed you money and if the estate went to probate. I don't know. Did he own a house? Yes. Yes. Did he have children? No, he no. left the house to me. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he had an estate. Clearly, there's money in the estate because he left a house that has some value to someone else. So you cannot, Mr. Klun, resort to self-help. And Mr. Lukoski is going to show me the value of the gun that his... Yes. May I expound just a bit on this gun? I don't care about the, the manufacturer. I don't the care gun. about the gun. I don't care if it's a okay. crown in my mouth. What's the value of the gun? The value of the gun at the time that this man took... No, no, just... Of it. Just give me an answer. It was $3,000. It's okay. gained in value. Okay, well, who cares if it's gained in value, sir? I'd like you to show me where the gun is valued at $3,000. Could you look it up? I did. And I have it. It's listed from the same photo. I found the website listed for... $2,500. Okay. My law clerk found an ad online. Now you're going to show me what you want to show me, that the value is $3,000. Let me see it, please. May I say something else about this gun? Not, to, not until I look at this. I don't know what this is. Immediate checkout credit card. What is this? Look at the very top, please. I see what this is. I want to see what you paid for. This is something that's on sale, starting it's bid. It's just a typical 28. price of what they sell for on Gun Broker. Okay. $2,500? Yes. Okay. Judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $2,500. We're finished. Thank you. This court is adjourned. I'm pleased at the outcome because the information needed to be exposed that there was something terribly wrong. Somebody waits for 10 months and finds out his gun is missing. Too many different people, and no one had the same answer from him at any time. Something's wrong. I don't think he had a choice. There was the only way he was going to win his case because everything's based on mistruths. I could not get my mind around the defendant to have a friend since high school that you're best friends with, you remained good friends with, if one of my best friends came to me and told me, hi, I just need to borrow $2,500, I'm going to be a millionaire two months from now. <laughs> I'd say, are you crazy? There's so many of these scams going around. I know I've seen your phone sometimes gets tripped up with oh, the absolutely. scammers. And in the middle of the night, ringing off the hook, it's unfortunate that people fall for these scams and really send their hard-earned money, sometimes that they don't have, to these scam artists, and they're never going to see it again. And I think that people have to be really vigilant. I know there's been warnings and things like that that I've seen more publicized recently about scams and just how detailed and intricate they can seem, but it's really just... I get them all the time, as you said. Yeah. I have to go like this and then delete <laughs> Delete, them. delete. Anton, please answer immediately. Your $3,000 refund is sitting here waiting for you. Non-existent. Uh, no. Sometimes they leave out Anton. Your $3,000 refund is here. Yeah, gotta and be smart. And, you know, Sarah, a couple of years ago, I don't know whether you remember, but it, I just thought about it. People were calling me and saying to me, Judy, I didn't know that you went into the cosmetics business. Oh, yes, I do, do remember? remember. And the people who crafted the advertisement, you know, with 
all kinds of real logos on the and top reviews of it. And, and reviews. And mm -hmm. I tried this stuff. And I remember being at the gym, working out, and a woman came over to me and said, you know, I bought your cosmetics, and they were really terrible. And they keep sending them to me every month. And probably charging I, her credit card. Charging her credit card. And I tried every vehicle in the government mm -hmm. to try to get somebody to... Shut it down. Track it down. And the answer was, they're so smart that they use international. You don't know where they could be. They could be in Peru. They could be in Chile. They could be in Brazil. They can be in Canada. And I know that there are many other celebrities who were caught with yeah. the, the same scam net. But this guy said, my friend Jim... Was probably was getting, getting scammed. scammed. Then why would you provide him Absolutely the money to right. get scammed? Absolutely right. Didn't believe is suing business owner Amber Howard for damages and defamation to her pet daycare business. Court, come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Hello, Judge. Case 2173, Langley versus Howard. Thank you. You're welcome. Ms. Langley, your complaint states that you live in a rural area, 13 acres. Your business is pet sitting. Correct. The property that you own does not have running water. Correct. So all of the water for your property has to be trucked in. Yes. The defendant is the owner of? Do you the owner's manage? wife. The same thing. They own a water business where they deliver by truck massive amounts of water, and you had used them for a period of time. Prior to Labor Day of 2021, when this incident occurred, how long have you been using the defendants? Probably about a year. And how often do they deliver water to your property? Four times a week. Usually three times for the pool and once for the house. Okay. And each time they came, was that on a set time during the week? We tried to get a set time, but it varied quite often. Okay. Would they call before they came? No. For the year that you had them, when they came, did you pay them at the time that they came? Yes, I did. Oftentimes, we paid in advance. So we paid so for the entire week. So you either paid week. in advance or you paid at the time of the delivery? Yes. Did you give them a check or cash? Check. Now, let's get to Labor Day 2021. On what day were they supposed to come? I believe it was the 4th of September. It was on a Friday. And who was at home to accept the delivery? We didn't know when they were coming, but I had taken my employee out to lunch, and I called my nephew, who was there holding down the fort, and told him if they deliver water, let them know I forgot the check, okay. so they can either deliver or come back later. Well, you live in a rural area. Coming yes. back later is a big inconvenience because you forgot the check. Yeah, it could be. Yeah. It happened that it was a big inconvenience because you went out for lunch mm -hmm. and you left a nephew. They came, the check wasn't there, and they left with the water. Now, what time did you come? I wasn't the one who delivered the water. It was my husband, but I believe he had came. No, he'll tell me. Oh, okay. So this was about a year and a half ago. I don't remember the exact time, but it was an AM delivery because we were going out of town Friday evening, going up north, so I was trying to get done with our route fairly early so that we could get So out the home. first time you came to the house was in the morning? That's correct. Not lunchtime? No. It was probably somewhere around 10 a.m. if I was to guess. Okay. And when you got there that one time, the nephew was there? That's correct. And tell me what happened. Well, the nephew, for starters, is about 12 years old. And the reason why we don't necessarily have a time frame for businesses is because if it's between business hours, when we show up and if they need water, usually that shouldn't be an issue um, for the Don't business. give me a whole story, yeah. sir. The nephew is 12 years old, yep. okay? And he was left in charge of the pets. That's correct. Okay, so the nephew was left in charge of these animals. And when you came, there was no check. What happened? Um, it wasn't even about the money, the reason why I left. Um, the reason why I showed up there is he was talking on the phone, and he said, we are not ready for water right now. He was on his phone? Yes. Where did this conversation take place? Near the, the uh, pool, the dog pool. And we were actually taking 4,000 gallons. So I brought my big truck. I'd bring 2,000 for the doggy pool and then 2,000 for the house because it was a holiday weekend, so I had to make sure that we got him enough water to last through the holiday weekend. Okay, and I assume that the plaintiff was satisfied with your service because she had continued with your service for over a year. Yes, that's correct. That's according to you. We had... We had that's according to you. You yes. had been satisfied with their service because if you weren't, you would have found somebody else. But you had been satisfied with their service. According to you, you paid them in advance. 
or on the date of the delivery. On Labor Day, September 4th, you left your 12-year-old nephew there. Well, but... Well, how old know. is he, 13? He's, he's 15. So what? What's the difference? Okay, I'm just well, maybe he's 15 now. Maybe he wasn't in 2021. So the nephew said to you, we're not ready for water delivery now. That's is correct. that what you're saying? Now, your business have a phone? Correct. Did the plaintiff ever call you and say, I'm home now, I'm sorry, there was a mix-up? No, so what happened, um, I showed up there, he wasn't ready for water. Um, I told him, I go, that is... What do you have to do to get ready for water? For their purposes, I believe it was to try to use up as much as they can. No, no, don't tell me what you but believe. They... I want to know yeah. what you have to do to get ready so, for a water delivery. Okay. Do you have to open up a spigot? <laughs> what do you have to do? Okay, so basically they're holding tanks um, that are in basements or in the ground. So normally nobody even has to be there, 90% well, of our customers. This particular case, one of their tanks is in a basement which doesn't have an alarm. So in order to fill their tank up, somebody has to be down there with a radio to radio up to us to know when to shut the water off. Okay, so that would have had to have been the nephew who was the, between the ages of 12 and 15 would have had to have been in the basement. That's correct. Okay. And when you came onto the property, he said we're not ready for a water delivery. That's correct. And he would have had to have been in the basement. That's correct. So you left. Yes. What happened next? Your Honor, I, I told him that I go, it's not that big of a deal. Um, I go, I got a few more stops. I'm going to go do those stops and then I'll come back. And then hopefully you'll be ready and your aunt would be ready for water at that time. So I went and did my two stops. Um, so I used up another 4,000 gallons. I filled back up went back to their house. At this time, it was probably somewhere around 12. And again, he said, we're still not ready for water. So you went back again at noon? Between 12 and 1, I would say. And the plaintiff wasn't home? That's correct, again. How many hours passed between the first delivery and the second? It takes me about 45 minutes per stop, and I know I did about two stops, so about an hour and a half it took me before I was back there. And for that hour and a half, she didn't come back. So she was either a very late breakfast or a very early lunch. That's correct. Okay, so now they go twice to deliver water to you, and you're not there, and neither is your check. So now you tell me what happened next. Um, Kyle called me. First, he doesn't have a phone, but he, we do have a business line. So he called me on the business line and um, told me that the driver just left. He goes, I don't know where he went. He said, I think who he told was who, Kyle. Who was that? I'm sorry, he's my nephew. Your nephew called you. What time? Well, our lunch is... What? I, I, you I went before you. lunch? because he was there earlier in the morning. We did not go before lunch. We went 12.30 to 2. The dogs always nap, 12.30 to 2. Okay. We separated the dogs. How many we times did they... We how many, five minutes How away. many times did they come to your house to deliver water? According to what I was told, I wasn't there, two. Well, that's what he says. He, he came twice. We haven't gotten to the third yet, but he came twice to your house and you weren't there. Correct. You're supposed to wait for a service. You're supposed to be there ready for the service. That would be on you. That's not on them, that on you. They came when they were supposed to, to deliver water, and you weren't there, and you left somebody who was not equipped to deal with the situation in charge. And what happened was, you didn't have water, potentially, over the holiday weekend, because they were going away, so you had to scurry to find other water. Correct. That's what this case is about. If your preteen or post-teen nephew was on the telephone, didn't want to be bothered at that moment, that ain't his fault. That's your fault that you left somebody incompetent when you were supposed to get a water delivery. All I'm saying to you is, this is nasty a year later. Nasty. Brenda Langley claims business owner Amber Howard defamed her pet daycare business. Amber is countersuing for negative reviews Brenda made toward her business. Okay, so according to you, a year later, you heard something about their business, so you wrote a negative something about their business on the internet. You'll tell me what that is in a moment. And in retaliation for that, they posted a negative comment about your business alleging something that had to do with the animals. So that's what this case is about. Your use of the internet to make trouble. You, a year later, according to you, only posted one negative review, is that right? Correct. And that was a year later? Yes. 
Do you want me to tell you why? Because hmm? they take the reviews down. You can't leave it. All, I'm, tried ask, right all away. I'm asking you is, I don't want to hear shoulda, woulda, coulda. A year later, you posted a negative review about Correct. them. So I'd like to see the review and why you waited a year. You would had a full year of positive service from these people. And the day that you had a problem with them was your fault. I just determined that. It was your fault. Okay. So I want to see what you said about them. Miss Langley, so I read this thing. It says, funny how this shows up as a recommendation. Apparently, they took the rating system off their page. They were always shorting us on water for the pool. Well, you use them satisfactorily for a year. So I think that that's baloney. We had had a couple of run-ins over it. Once when I complained, the driver said my nephew told him to stop. What is that about? Once when you complained about what? About the pool being short on water. Just so what did your nephew have to do with them? Your nephew was hardly a teenager. What did your nephew have to do with discussing Nothing, things really. with the bro? Nothing. Nothing. He would help them sometimes bring the hose in and things like that, but he was just a helper every once in a while. Well, what he does that mean? He didn't have anything once to do with Once when I it. complained, the driver said my nephew told him to stop. Video surveillance proved he was lying. No one ever approached him and no one spoke to him. I showed the owner the video and he didn't seem to care. The last stroll was when the owner, that would be them, left for a holiday weekend and we had no water and low pool water. Well, that would be your fault. You don't say that here. It just makes it appear as if they left and left you high and dry, but they mm -hmm. came at least twice, he's gonna tell me a third time, probably, to deliver water and you weren't there. When my Nephew asked if we could pay next week. He got in his truck and left. That's also your fault. If he would have communicated, I could have brought the money. We were Should five have, minutes away. Just a second. That puts the onus on them. Why weren't you there? This is all on you. This isn't on them. No conversation, no phone call, not even a curse word. I called his wife to find out what happened, and she said they were going out of town for the weekend. And you put in parentheses, too bad. Well, you're allowed oh, to go out. You're bad. allowed. <laughs> yeah, you're allowed to go out for lunch right. when their delivery is coming without a check. But they're not allowed to go out for Labor Day, for the weekend. I immediately called a competitor to bail us out. Thank God he took mercy on us and came out right away. We have had excellent service with a competitor ever since. It could have been catastrophic to try not just to live but run a business with no water over the holiday weekend. You should have been home to get your delivery. And so, Can I say something? Sure. I always paid. They knew I was good for the money. And nobody has to be there when they deliver water. We don't watch them deliver water, except for maybe in the house, and Kyle was there to receive it. If just a second. He just told me that one of the water tanks is in the basement. Somebody has to be there in the basement in your house. If your preteen or post-teen nephew was on the telephone, didn't want to be bothered at that moment, that ain't his fault. That's your fault that you left somebody incompetent when you were supposed to get a water delivery. All I'm saying to you is, this is nasty a year later. Nasty. And for no reason. I don't hear a reason why this a year later. You want to tell me? I had heard about some bad business practices, so it got me upset again. So I decided to look and find a, a way to put a review on. They had taken their reviews off the page. So immediately I wanted to put a review on there, but they have it down as a recommendation. Who cares? So that's when I left. I just, wa I just still don't understand why a year later you stir this up. So for a year, you were getting water from a competitor. You cut off their system. They seem to be still surviving. You're still in business? Yes, yes. They were in business without you. You're in business without them. Right. OK, so this is nasty. OK, now, as a result of being nasty, they wrote a review about you, which is why you're here, yes. about your business. Yes. May I see that review? Um about her statement saying that she only had gave us one bad review. We have proof that we have multiple bad reviews, not just the one, over that course of a year and a half. May I see, and I'd yes, like to Honor. see them. Did you write more than one negative review? Yeah, okay, sure. I'm gonna take a look at them. That's what I posted. Oh, excuse, I'm sorry, this is what I posted right here. I gave you the wrong copy. Oh, well, this, 
is a different one where you say last water haulers suggested we had to kiss whatever or they would not show. They rarely answered a call or a text in a timely manner. I was even late to a party posted at my home. I had zero water and couldn't shower, couldn't get in touch with anybody. The last row was Friday. They dropped us on a holiday weekend and said that they would see us on Tuesday. I don't think that was a review, Your Honor. Was this not a review? I don't believe so. No, it wasn't it was a review. A it was a comment. Yep. It was a comment. Mm -hmm. It was still out there, alive, out there. So it was really a tit for tat. You Correct. got tired? He wrote that review on my page, so I decided to write a true review about her page. Perfect. So did I get that all right? Good. A pox on both your houses. Brenda Langley has accused business owner Amber Howard of defaming her pet daycare business. Amber claims Brenda created negative reviews a year after their dispute ended. I'm looking to see what you posted about her. He's got it. You want to judge? Thank you. Okay. So you posted this on October the 30th, and this is on a Facebook? Yes. We used to supply water for the puppy pool here three times a week, and our drivers witnessed on multiple occasions the staff mistreating dogs in their care. They would see on multiple occasions dog feces in the pool before they would fill it up. We were going to send our dog there before we knew all this, but I told our dog was too small and they could not accommodate him. Now that I know the kind of business they run, I'm thankful I kept my pet out of their care. I would think twice before sending your beloved pet there. And then Lucky Puppy, that would be you. Funny, I just gave you a poor review on your page. The difference is our review was true. Your review is defamation of character. You can remove your untrue statements or you can be sued. Your choice. So now I'm going to ask you sort of the same question. The incident happened on Labor Day of 2021. October 30th, and that would be of 2022? Correct. So between the time that they ceased to be customers of yours and a year later, what happened that caused you to write this negative review? So as you can see in the evidence I gave you, she all the time was just saying negative things about our business. We okay. never had said anything so, okay. about so it her was, business. Okay, so just a second. So the answer was, it was tit for tat. Correct. It was tit for tat. She was writing negative reviews about your business. Mm -hmm. So you wrote, which I just determined were untrue. So you wrote a negative review about her business. Correct. A year later. I mean, if you were really concerned about the pets, you would have written it immediately. So it was really a tit for tat. You Correct. got tired. He wrote that review on my page, so I decided to write a true review about her page. Perfect. So did I get that all right? Good. A pox on both your houses. May I say something, please? Sure. So what she accused us of is illegal. Just I mean, a second. We have to keep sanitary con conditions, and we have How do to I, just a second. Our... How do I know that one of their drivers didn't report seeing feces in the pool? How do I know that? I've been there before and asked them why they didn't need water that currently week, you know, that they're going to need it, the 2,000 gallons on Wednesday like they normally do. And he said we just had to get the dogs out just because we realized it was feces in there. They said it happens a few times a year. So it okay. was not a Whatever. statement. Whatever. It's their business, madam. Just like this is your business. If you run a dirty place... I don't that, know. That's well, the just a second. My well, they, they, well, they, well they don't run an irresponsible business. In your reviews, you're suggesting that they are irresponsible and also thieves, because in one of your reviews, you say they were shorting us on water. Yes, they were. That's what you say. And you said it not only a year later, you said it during the course of the year. And it was their business. Their business is as important to them as yours is to you. So if you're going to weaponize the, these reviews, then you both deserve what you got. You're not supposed to do that. If you were legitimately concerned about the dogs, you would have reported it right away. What this was was tit for tat, so you deserve each other. Claim and counterclaim are dismissed. Goodbye. This court is adjourned.
My thing was that they accused us of breaking the law, and it was totally untrue. My statements were true. Whether they were in the wrong or not, they were true statements, and hers were complete fabrication. I mean, we had been dealing with it for about a year and a half, so I was, I was just really shocked when I received the paperwork in the mail since I did delete the review since she did threaten to sue me, so I did delete it. Look at reviews, and if you can't find them, go somewhere else. I wanted both of us to be su successful businesses because we live in a small community and our businesses do not, you know, we're not in direct competition with each other. So I wish her well and I would hope she would wish, wish our business well. You know, people like me just learn to look at a restaurant and see what the reviews are. And you sort of assume that people of goodwill, if they're going to post something that's negative, it's because they had a negative experience. And I think it's such a shame that it's become a way to weaponize legitimate reviews where somebody, the plaintiff in this case, had absolutely no clue that the problem on Labor Day was her fault. Yeah. Yeah. She had perfectly reasonable relationship with him for over a year. She said they paid him in advance. She never said anything about shorting water. It's just the power of the internet. I mean, now today, I know there are people that will cancel businesses for reasons completely unrelated to the business, but if you act out, you say the wrong thing, you display a negative character trait in public, people will go to your business's page, completely unrelated to anything in the business, and just flood the page. I'm talking thousands. They will get thousands of people to write bad reviews about a business, especially if something went viral, or if the owners of the business, if they were in a viral video that was not nice, you know, it's the power of the internet and cancel culture. Well, you know, the internet can be a tool for good and wonderful, or as we know, it can, be a very, it can be a very dark place. Yep. But it can't be a very dark place without mean-spirited or bad people. Yep. And there are mean-spirited and bad people. You know, I don't know how you protect yourself from something like that. I really don't know how you protect The consumer has to be smart in reading the reviews and how much weight they're giving reviews. I like when businesses respond to especially the negative reviews. And sometimes they're funny because if the defendants had responded to the plaintiff's review publicly, you know, so people like you and I who were thinking about using them for water delivery could see it, they'd say, oh, interesting, we called twice and you weren't home <laughs> and you didn't have our money. That's the response. And so, so I like That's to see the... that because it calls out the person, person who left the negative review. But obviously there's downsides to a business. You don't want to get into a back and forth with every person that leaves a negative review. But sometimes when it's warranted, he responds you explain. To it, but the response isn't to post a negative exactly. review about you. Exactly. You're right. <laughs> Jada Maxwell is suing her sister Valastasia Maxwell for unauthorized bank account charges and property damage. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Hello, Judge. Case 2191, Maxwell versus Maxwell. Thank you. You're welcome. Miss Maxwell, this is your sister. Correct. Older, younger? Younger. The two of you decided to take an apartment together. Correct. When was that? August 27th of 2021. Were you both on the lease? No, ma'am, just me. How long did you live together? It was about six to seven months. When did your sister leave? What month? Um, she left at the end of June of 2022. June of? 2022. Miss Maxwell, was it your arrangement that you would split the rent? No. I would pay a portion of the rent, not split it even. Well, tell me what a portion was. The first month I stayed there, which was September only, I didn't pay anything. In October through November, 200, and then... After that, it was four. Well, how much was the rent? Nine fifty, I believe. And how many of you lived in the apartment? Just us two. Well, why weren't you paying half the rent? I slept on a couch. Oh, is that correct? That is correct, Your Honor. Except for the agreement. The agreement was that she would keep the apartment clean and pay half the rent and utilities. Well, why would she pay half the rent if you get the bedroom? It was her agreement. That was just. No, I'm just saying, that doesn't sound reasonable to me. If she got the couch and you got the bedroom, why would she pay? the utilities and half the rent? Well, it wasn't... The rent itself was, like, she gave me what she could, but that was just our agreement. I bought the couch big enough so okay. that she would be okay. able to use okay. it. Nonsense. OK, this is what the case is about. You claim that she stopped paying any money towards the apartment and you threw her out. And when she left, she damaged some property, and then she charged some money on either your credit card or a debit card. My debit card. 
Did you ever give her your debit card? There was only one time when I when I handed her with permission to use the credit card at a gas station. That's not true. Just, just. You had a physical debit card. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, and the one time that you let her use it, I want you to tell me when that was and what that was. For. It was it was within the time period of her living in the apartment. We were at a gas station and I was filling up. She went inside the gas station to purchase something because she didn't have money at the time and that was it. That was the only time that I recall her ever giving her permission to use my card. Okay. She moved out of the apartment in June of 2022 and I understand it was not an amicable process and the police were called. Correct. Who called the police? I did. Why? My dad gave me advice and he said that I should call the, the non-emergency escort so that they can watch her, make sure that she actually leaves when, when she was asked. And what day in June was this? I do not recall the date. You don't have a police report or a number? Uh, not for that. They didn't give me a police report for that. Did they give you a police report for something else? I have the police report for the fraud. Oh, I'd like to see that. Yes, Your Honor. Because it is your claim that you used the information from your debit card and withdrew a lot of money from your debit card. Correct. So you reported this to the police on August 25th. 24th. It says reported okay. 825. How much money did she take out of the account? At the time of that, it was only estimated about 10, but once the July statement came out, I was able to add up more and it was nearly 14, 15 grand. May I see it, please? How did you get her banking information? I had to I call them. Shh. How did you get her banking information? I don't have her bank information. Well, you took money out of her account. You acknowledge you took money out of her account. I only took money out when she gave me permission. No, no, no. You acknowledge that you took money out of the account. I've read your answer. How did you get her account information? She gave me her card on multiple occasions. You mean after you moved out, she gave you her card? No. Shh, shh. Yes. Do you understand? You're, you're not going to end up well here. Do you understand that? Because if she called the police, if she called the police to watch you, to escort mm -hmm. you out of the house, there is no question that she did not thereafter give you permission to use her credit card or her debit card. That doesn't make sense. She Do did. You understand? Do you understand the chronology of what I'm saying to you? Yes, Your Honor. So if I were to believe you, the only time you used her credit card is when you were still there. And that was prior to June of 2022. That's incorrect. My grandmother passed away in August, August 9th of 2021. And she was my legal guardian to the age of 18. So I was under her account as a beneficiary. So when she passed, I got the money. Jada Maxwell claims her sister, Valastasia Maxwell, wrongfully took money from her bank account and damaged her property. There is no question that she did not thereafter give you permission to use her credit card or her debit card. That doesn't make sense. She Do did. You understand? Do you understand the chronology of what I'm saying to you? Yes, Your Honor. So if I were to believe you, the only time you used her credit card is when you were still there. And that was prior to June of 2022. That's incorrect. Just a second. So you're telling me that after she called the police to escort you out of the apartment, she still gave you permission to use her card? Yes, Your Honor. <laughs> me and I still went over to her apartment until July 15th. For what? I had my stuff there that Just I to gather your things. Things, and she let me use her car multiple occasions to get some of the furniture that she let me have, and she told me that I can use her card. When was the last time you visited with your sister? July what? July 15th. And when was the last time you used her card? July 16th. What did you use her card for July 16th? Rent. Between what periods of time did you use her card? Give me the dates. Since September of 2021 until July 16th. September of 21. And what was it for in September? She would send me to the store, or if I was already at the store in her car, she would tell me to use her card or something like that. 
she would pay me to... How much the... did you spend on her card just for you? Just for you, not for joint, not send it to the store. Um, Here's my card. I have it here. Tell me how much you spent on you. I'm not sure of the exact amount. Did the police contact you with regard to the fraud? No. They never did? No. The police report, do you name your sister as the person who stole your money? Yes, Your Honor. There is a, the bank told me, um... No, don't tell me what the bank told you. Bank doesn't tell you anything. Would you show me here, uh, maybe I'm missing it, where you report the person who took the money out of your account? That is the only document they, when I went down to the station that they gave me. Um, when I went to actually make the, the, the file, uh, she just asked me a couple questions, who I... No, no, was. don't ask, don't tell me what somebody else asked you. Yes, Your Honor. Did you report to the police that it was your sister who fraudulently took your money? I did, but the police, eventually, they cut it off because I was going to pursue small claims. They told me that they are no longer needed. Oh, small claims. Why were you going to pursue small claims? How because much money do you... Th I how much money that. does she have? <laughs> Miss Maxwell, let's get it together. Let's get it all together. Okay? You were not going to pursue small claims because you knew that in small claims you would end up with zero. Uh, you knew that. At the time, I didn't understand what everything meant, which is why I tried calling a bunch of people and I spoke to, like, um... No, I just want to know mm -hmm. why at this point, because the bank gave you back some money. Correct. How much money did the bank give you back? Um, I have it here. It was about, um, 4,900, nearly five grand. Okay, and they gave you back almost $5,000. I'd like to see the communication with the bank. Um, with the bank as to, I mean, if you are alleging fraud, right. if you're alleging fraud and you say that you had all of this money taken out of your account. Correct. Okay, then there's no reason why the bank, if you were alleging fraud and they found that there was fraud, why wouldn't they return all the money? Because they have a policy that within the three months, the first, they can only go up to the first three months. And because I didn't, I didn't realize sooner, they can only go up to that three months. So they were only able to, to give me back within the transactions within those three months. Is this a savings account or a checking it, account? It was beneficiary. What is that? Um, when somebody pass and you get money. Explain that to me. I'm just... I don't understand what the beneficiary account is. Um, my grandmother passed away in August, August 9th of 2021. And she was my legal guardian to the age of 18. So I was under her account as a beneficiary. So when she passed, I got the money. So you were living with your grandmother? Correct. Okay. And what was the benefit package? What do you mean? How much did you get as a beneficiary? It was about 50 grand. On what date? I'm not sure when it was processed, but the, it was opened. This payment started of October of 2021. Or transactions started. I don't started. understand what a beneficiary account is. Who paid the money? Who paid this $50,000? My grandmother. She would put money in there so that if something were to happen to her, the money would go to me or whoever she listed. Your Honor. It's a type of savings account. In simple words, a beneficiary bank account is a type of savings account in which the funds are transferred to somebody else after the account owner passes away directly to the beneficiary. Okay. This had nothing to do with you receiving benefits through your grandmother. No. This is an account that your grandmother set up for you. Correct. Now, is that grandmother also her grandmother? Yes, Your Honor. Did you have a relationship with your grandmother? Yes, I did. Did she only set up the one account? I'm not sure, but I wasn't the only one that received money. What about you? Nothing. Okay, so how much is left in that account now? Uh, the account is closed out. By whom? At the bank. After a certain, like, un once it goes under a certain amount, they send you a check with the rest of the money. How much did they send you a check for? It was about $200. Well, who spent the $50,000? I made transactions throughout the time period as okay. well. Okay. What did you buy with $50,000? I just, I just basically used it. What does that mean? I, I wasn't responsible with it. I'll be honest about that. Did you know that your sister had this $50,000 amount of money? I didn't know she had that much, no. Did you know she had any? Yeah. Did you know where it came from? Yes. 
You have here July total $3,148.14. What does that number represent? All transactions that were confirmed to be her added up total. You can't use her credit card after you're not speaking to your sister. Jada Maxwell has accused her sister, Belastasia Maxwell, of taking money from her bank account and damaging her property. Now, what did you buy with $50,000? I just, I just basically used it. What does that mean? I wasn't responsible with it. I'll be honest about that. Did you know that your sister had this $50,000 amount of money? I didn't know she had that much, no. Did you know she had any? Yeah. Did you know where it came from? Yes. Are you working? Yes. What kind of work do you do? I'm a cashier. And what about you? I currently work at Chipotle and I also Uber on the side. When was the last time you saw your sister? July 16th, or I'm sorry, July, um, July 20th. Are there any charges here after July 16th of 2021? Yes, Your Honor, I actually gave that up already. In the top it says July, it's, it's written on there. Just a second. I'm gonna give this back to you. Yes, Your Honor. Find any charges that were made after July 16th. It was after July 16th was the last time you saw your sister? No contact, we didn't have okay. contact. So the last time that you saw her was in July? Correct. You have here July total $3,148.14. What does that number represent? That is, uh, that's the all transactions that were confirmed to be her added up total in just the month of July. Were there any? Yes, yes, it goes in, it, if it goes. Were there order. any charges? There were quite a few. In August, or was July the last amount of money that she took out? In August, the card got cut off, so there were no. Okay, more. so that the most that she incurred on the card in July was $3,000. Correct, Your Honor. And she left on July? She was kicked out at the end of June. The end of June? Correct. Yes, June of 2022. Correct. And that was with a police escort? Correct. No. Okay. Police watching you? They left and I was still in the apartment. But they were there, they were called. Right. Okay. Now, what property do you allege that your sister damaged? Because that's the second part of your lawsuit. It was a couch and what? it was um, $1,100. Well, I have pictures of the aftermath of when she was kicked out and what the, the state of the apartment was left in, including the couch. Just show me the couch. If she damaged your couch, let me see it. I can't see what the damage is to this couch. Um, it shows better in other pictures. Yeah. I don't see damage, I just see a lot of dirt. Um, under the cushions there was mold and then there's a picture that shows uh, two cigarette burns that her friend left. Could you return this to the plaintiff, please? A lot of dirt, okay. Anything else? Thank you. You can't use her credit card after you're not speaking to your sister. I don't believe I didn't, she, you're... yes you did, $3,148. I did not spend $3,000. Kevin. These are July's statements. Here. I think one of those things is yours. The bottom document. Okay, anything else? Judging for the plaintiff in the amount of $3,148. We're done here. Thank you very much. This court is adjourned. There was a lot more to show, but I'm glad I got something back. She took a lot from me. I don't see how you can decide I made a transaction with my name written in pen. And caused a lot of downfall after the fact. She's just mad, I guess. I'm not sure. I almost ended up homeless. I almost lost my job because of this. I didn't cause any damage. It was very hard. I didn't want to, I didn't even want to press charges because she's my sister. Nothing. They pulled up, they said that I had to leave, and I said, no, I already paid my portion, and they said, okay, and they left. No, she was kicked out prior to that. My friend did do that, I can say that, but like... She's just lying. 
I didn't damage anything. At this point, I, I just, I don't believe her. I don't trust her. She took advantage of me. Hopefully we can just dead it, but I don't know. But, so I'm just glad that I was able to get something back so I can continue to get back up on my feet. One day at a time. I'm hoping for an apology, some remorse. Who knows? After I confronted her and she admitted to it, she ignored and cut everybody out. She didn't even say she was sorry. She didn't speak to me. I don't know. You know, it's a little bit easier now to commit fraud using someone's credit card, even if you only had access to the physical card for five seconds. It's long enough to take a picture of the back and input all the information into the door dashes, the Ubers, all the accounts. And if you don't check carefully, you may not notice for a couple months. So, I mean, I've been a victim of fraud in that way, and I know it can be very stressful trying to deal with the credit card company, and especially when it's your sister. I mean, my sister better think twice before using my credit card. Do you know, generationally, I have a problem. It's actually my problem, because I'm used to writing out a check. I have a checkbook. I write out the check. I deduct the check from my balance. I know what is... How they taught it, you in fourth grade. To, that, to absolutely. You want <laughs> to make a deposit in a savings account. We were taught you brought $2, you put it in a bank account, in the bank book every Friday. Your teacher stamped it, $2. That's how you save money. And the fact that you can walk into a store and take okay. your phone and go like that yep. and charge... And who knows whose information all is on there? frightening to me. It all sounds as if it's going to collapse around me. But everybody, I think everybody who's under 50 uses that, probably yeah. more than 50, because <laughs> my children are Maybe. actually 50. It's hard to <laughs> come to terms with that. But they all use their... Online banking. Online and... banking. Yeah. I still don't have my banking <laughs> I, online. I know. I still do. Yeah. I still call them. Yeah. <laughs> they say, it's her again on the phone. <laughs> you know you could do this online, online now, right? Yeah, no. Anyway. Well, keep doing it your it. way, and hopefully we don't get uh, ruined by our way. <laughs> yeah, fingers crossed. She seemed like a decent young woman, yeah. the plaintiff. You know, it's sad. Her grandmother saved probably all of her life yeah. so that her granddaughter had a little nest egg of $50,000, and she blew through it. Yeah. Blew through it. Unfortunate, but I appreciate the honesty. And it was honest. Put money in trust. Her former co-worker, Diamond Horton for vandalizing her car and harassment while working together. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Case 2141, Hill versus Horton. Thank you. You're welcome. Miss Hill. Yes, sir. What's this man's name? Claudius Brown. You have a child with him. Yes, ma'am. Who's 10 years old? Yes. Is that your only child? No, ma'am. How many children do you have? I have four children. Is he the oldest? She is the oldest. She. She's the oldest? Yes. Does she see her father? No. Hasn't seen him in how long? Months to a year. The defendant has two children with him. Yes, ma'am. How old are they? Well, he'll be two on the ninth, and then I have a 10-month-old. And then, according to what I've read here in either the complaint or the answer, he has at least one other child. Yes, ma'am. Which is how old? Probably about... Seven. Seven. Does he see that child? Every blue moon when she brings him. So once in a while. Yeah. So he has four children all together? Yes, ma'am. And you currently live with him? Yes. What does he do for a living? Well, he works at a warehouse. And you? But I'm a certified nurse assistant. Who takes care of the kids? Me and Claudius. You work different shifts? Yes, he works overnight. I work day shift. So you're currently working? Yes, ma'am. But there came a time... I'm just trying to figure out why everybody's sort of mad and fighting over him. I don't understand it. There must be something that you ladies see that is hidden from me because it is your claim, Miss Hill, that Miss Horton not only vandalized your car, but that she caused you to be fired from your job. She says that you filed a false restraining order against her and that actually you caused her to lose her job and it's all over the prize. <laughs> Which I can never really understand. How long have you been working in your current job? About three months now. So you got another job? Yes, ma'am. Do you like it? Yes. Making about the same money or more? A little less. 
And where are you working? I'm a machine operator. So you got another job? Yes. Because all this started when all of a sudden you found yourselves working in the same place? Yes. And in what month was that? That was, um, I started the job May 31st, but it spilled over into June is when everything took place. And how long were you working at the same place? Three months. I started March 4th of 2022. Okay, so it was a short-term employment for both of you. And you were there first? Yes, ma'am. And you came? Shortly thereafter, yeah. shortly after she started to work. Had you ever met each other? No. Well, explain to me what the problem was. So there's a history that started back in 2019 via text messages and Facebook. So we've had an ongoing beef for years. Who cares? Now you're going to both get smarter. You're going to come here today and you're going to both get smarter. And if he has two children that he doesn't see, her daughter... Yes. And your seven-year-old, according to what I hear that you see once every blue moon, that's a basket that I wouldn't be in. So you have a history of bad texting back and forth and stuff. I don't care about that. Let's get to the two allegations of, one, that she vandalized your tires. When and what proof do you have that she vandalized your tires? This is after you both found yourself in the same working environment. It wasn't my tires. She actually keyed my vehicle. Keyed it? Yes. On what date? On June 18th. And I have my police report from that. Okay. I'll look at the police report. Did you see her key your car? I did not see her, but I requested video footage from the job, and they stated that they would give me the video footage. Do we have it? We don't have it, but the city attorney was unable to receive it as well. But I have a letter from the city attorney. You don't have it here for me. And you didn't see her key your car. Yes. What we're here for is a trial. So I need what proof you have that she keyed your car. I assume your car was at work. Yes. When it was keyed. Okay. And I'm assuming that you don't like each other. That things got nasty, heated on social media, back and forth. I'm assuming all that is true. All I need for you to show me is proof that she keyed your car. Well, I have audio recording from HR where they're stating that everything was initiated by the defendant. And Arkansas is a one-party state, so I can play the audio for you. Oh, it was she on the audio? They're talking about the video in the recording and that they were supposed to give it to me. Can't help you. Okay. This next part of your case is that she caused you to lose your job. Yes. Go. So I have my termination letter stating that they're defended. I'd like to see a termination letter. That's a joke. This is the description of the termination letter and the description of the violation. Kiana has been involved in altercations with another employee. While the other employee instigated the situations, it has gotten to a point where multiple other staff are now involved. I don't know what that means. At this point, it is affecting patient care and causing a hostile work environment, termination effective immediately. I assume that you have a similar letter because you were yes, terminated. May I see it? Yes. I also have a final warning. Just a, sec just a second. Okay. On Wednesday, June 15th, 2022, Diamond, that's you. Yes, ma'am. Was given a final written notice concerning harassment of other employees. It has since been reported that the harassment has continued. Also, multiple other staff have been pulled into this situation to the point that it's affecting patient care. And it's a termination letter. Okay. So, I'm assuming since you got this, you were notified previously about having any communication with no, each other. You were not. I was out for COVID. I had just got back to work June 15th of 2022. And I found out that Hill was working there. I never knew she was working there at all. And so I got That's called to the office. Honest. What was the beef about? I don't understand. The other baby mama is the reason why we're into it. The seven-year-old's mother? Yes. Yeah. The seven-year-old's mother? Yes. Yes. And later today... How much money in total did you pay Miss Goodwin for her work in planning your wedding? I paid her 50 bucks. Well, don't you think that's ridiculous? Kiana Hill claims her former co-worker, Diamond Horton, harassed her at work and caused her to be fired. Diamond is countersuing, 
for filing a false restraining order. My question was a relatively simple one because I'm going to make this as simple as possible before I probably dismiss both of them. I would like to see after June 15th, 2022, up until the date of the termination, which is June 23rd, 2022, how the harassment continued. I would like you to show me from June 15th. The actual date was June 14th. Well, this says June 15th. I wasn't well, working. To, to, shh. She this violation, my friends, is when we have the I just, date time stamp. I just want you to show me after June fifteenth, between June fifteenth and June twenty third, yes, what further acts that you allege are acts of harassment occurred. I have the schedule showing the date. Shh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I don't know what this is. A fake Facebook page that she made. How do you know this is a fake Facebook page that she made? That was a requested message that was sent to me after her and myself had a conversation well, I... and she was threatening to beat me up. <laughs> and it says, since you didn't apologize, D is going to beat you up. Okay. The D that they're referring to is Diamond. Oh my God. What is this? The 870 number is her calling my phone. Okay. An 870. The missed calls. This was on what date? That was on June 19th. What were you calling her for at 6 o'clock in the evening? Well, the day she accused me of vandalizing her car is uh, the day that we had worked together. She called the police and her family came up there and they all had guns. That's the reason she got terminated, because she brought a gun on the premises. That's and they came up there states. to jump me. That's a lie. When I went outside... I just want to ask you why you called her. I called her to ask her because the June 16th is when I sat down. I had a conversation together I to did. drop all beef. Like, she no was issue. While she was I don't want you. He, don't I you want to say you her. can't control yourself? I understand you're sending me a bad message. If you can't control yourself here, which is a very controlled setting, I'm going to say to myself, this is somebody who can't control themselves outside of the setting. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So I called her to ask her why did she feel like I vandalized her vehicle? Because before that, we sat down and we had a conversation together at work saying it should be dead. Like, why well, we should not have any beef any over him at all, and that the kids were involved. And so we agreed to let it go. So then she accused me of vandalizing her vehicle. What was the beef about? I don't understand. The other baby mama is the reason why we're into it. The seven-year-old's mother? Yes. Yeah. The seven-year-old's mother? Yes. 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 <laughs> so we have no proof of vandalizing, and this is nonsense. You want to tell me about the restraining order that you filed? There was an order of protection placed after she was harassing me at work. May I see it? Yes. But it was also rescinded. By the way, does he pay child support for your daughter? Yes, ma'am. He does. How much? He pays probably about two thirty nine every two weeks, somewhere does around Does he pay it to you? Yes. Well, it's through child support. But he pays it to you? Yes. And he's current? Yes. Well, there's back pay, but... He's currently paying. Okay. So was there a hearing on this order of protection? It was not. There was no, not. There you was not a hearing. Just a second. Did you appear? No. I rescinded it. I understand that. I just want to know the court found that the petition was dismissed. It was a false accusation. Mm -mm. <laughs> okay. So the reason that the order states it was dismissed is that the petitioner doesn't meet the definition of family or household member as defined in whatever statute is and therefore does not allege the existence of domestic abuse mm -hmm. doesn't address the gravamen of the petition it's a more procedural dismissal mm -hmm. because she's not related to you in any way i mean having children with a person in common doesn't make you at least in this jurisdiction part of the household Okay, you both look like nice ladies. You know he has kids with two other people. Not a great track record. He Not really a... don't see them because they don't let them. They don't want well, their kids around a, me. There's, there's a reason, you know, maybe. Not a great track record. It's not good for your children. It's really not good for your children. I mean, your children, believe it or not, your children are related to each other. I mean, you may not have any interest whatsoever, but when your children get older, they may have a curiosity about who their half-sibling is, what they look like, uh, they like. They may have interest. So what I can suggest to you is your children didn't ask to be born. The idea that you exert any energy whatsoever 
negative energy with regard to each other is ridiculous. Really ridiculous. But for him, you wouldn't have any contact with each other. Am I, right. am I reading that right? Yes, yes ma'am. Yeah. Well, why? He hasn't been in your life in years. And I know that he shouldn't have been in your life at least for the last seven years because he's got a seven-year-old with somebody else, right? And you have a 10-year-old. Mm -hmm. Goodbye, except for your daughter. Mm -hmm. And so it... can I state that it's, the situation is not about him. It's about the harassment, the lost wages. That's more of my concern with her. It has nothing to do with I, I was working before you. I was working as y'all. You came just, to my job. Just like... a second. What I'm telling you is, right now, and I don't have to get into it any further, right now, she's got the guy. I don't care. Just a second. Right now, she's got the guy. So that would perhaps give rise to some animus on your part. With regard to her position, he's working and he's paying money to your child, mm -hmm. which is, in her mind, taking money away from her two children that she has with him. Well, that's his responsibility. You knew about that I child and you knew about the seven-year-old. Mm -hmm. So what I'm telling you is there's a lot of negative energy going on. You both got jobs relatively soon after this. It was probably not a good idea for you to stay in the same place. And your employer was absolutely right and actually quite brave in today's times to say we're terminating both of you because your job is affecting patient care. Because it's not only the two of you. Other employees have been drawn into this drama. That's because she brought them in. I don't know whether she brought them in or not. And I don't care whether she brought them in. And later today... She wasn't your best friend. She wasn't even a close friend. You hadn't spoken to her in years. So clearly you called her to do a job for you that was her profession. And in addition to doing that, she bought you your wedding dress. Kiana Hill claims her former co-worker, Diamond Horton, harassed her at work and caused her to be fired. Diamond is countersuing for filing a false restraining order. Now, of all the places that you have to work, you had to work in a place where she was working. I didn't know she worked there. And she didn't know that you were there. She did on the first day that I started, and she told everyone who I was and what the situation was. I was out for COVID. COVID. Okay, who cares? <laughs> anyway, cases are dismissed. Goodbye, good luck. This court is adjourned. I feel like the judge, she made the right decision. She didn't listen. Because I'm with the baby, her baby's father, which is now my baby's father. He had nothing to do with this situation. I just want to be there for my kids. You know, to his credit, mm -hmm. he's paying support. Sure. Has a job. Has a job. And I don't know why these two women feud yeah. when, according to plaintiffs, she has no interest in him anymore. And she's getting support. She's getting support. I just don't understand. There are so many things that life has that present obstacles. Why, yeah. why fight over a guy? There's many good causes you could get behind and yeah, fight yeah, for. Let's yeah. choose one of those. Yeah, right. <laughs> Case number 2149, Goodwin versus Philpot. All parties, please step forward. Manuelita Goodwin is suing wedding planner Kayla Philpot for repayment of items purchased for Kayla's wedding. Miss Philpott, how long have you known Miss Goodwin? Um, since I was a child. I don't really remember much of her when I was a child, but she remembers me as a baby. Well, I know what she remembers. You were getting married. When? What was the date of the wedding? May 6, 2021. Where was the wedding supposed to be held? It was going to be held in Turlock. Is that a, a wedding venue? Yes. How many people were coming? Um, it ended up being around 25 people. It was kind of small. How many people did you invite? 60. But 25 came. Yeah. It was during the height of COVID. Tell me, when you contacted Ms. Goodwin, you contacted her because you knew she was a wedding planner, mm. right? Yes. And when did you contact her? I believe I contacted her in January. And at the time you contacted her, had you made any wedding plans at all? Um, very little. Okay. During the course of your wedding plan, she said she would help you. Yes. Prior to January 2021, when you contacted her. When was the last time you saw her? I can't even remember. Well, was it in 2020? No. 2019? No. So you hadn't seen her in at least two or three years? Yes. How many times in that two or three year period did you communicate with her by text or by phone? Never. 
So the reason that you called her in January of 2021 was to assist you with your wedding? Yes. And she did? Yes. That's why we're here. Yes. She said she laid out a whole bunch of money for you in planning your wedding and purchasing things for your wedding, and she wants to be reimbursed for that. So when you called and asked her to help plan your wedding, what did you ask her to do for you? I asked her to help me because I really didn't have a sense of, like, direction of what to do for a wedding, and I asked her if she would pay for a decoration, and then I told her that I was getting my tax return and that I would pay her for the decoration, and we started with that. Started with that. Mm -hmm. How much money in total did you pay Miss Goodwin for her work in planning your wedding? I paid her 50 bucks. Well, don't you think that's ridiculous? It is ridiculous, right? You called her and engaged her to be a wedding planner for your wedding. She wasn't your best friend. She wasn't even a close friend. You hadn't spoken to her or seen her in years. So clearly, you called her to do a job for you that was her profession, her vocation. And in addition to doing that, she bought you your wedding dress. Yes. How much was your wedding dress? I ended up, oh, well, we got a few dresses. The first one didn't work out, and I believe that one was 200 and then... Who paid for that one? She did. So the first one didn't work out. Mm -hmm. That was $200. Yes. And it didn't work out. Why? I didn't like the fit on it. Didn't like it. Okay, but you bought it. Well, yeah. she bought it. Yes. And where is that dress now? I gave it back, and we ended up returning it. Okay, so you got your money back? Yes. Oh, great. Strike that out. And what about the next dress? The next dress, it was from Amazon, and we didn't like the fit either, so we ended up returning that one. And who, that one was... Who ordered that dress? You or the plaintiff? I believe it was me. Okay, and what did you finally end up with? I ended up getting a dress from David's Bridal that I really liked. How much was that? I believe it was 500 who paid for that? She did. So, so far, you've paid $50 for her services, and so far, at least what I know, just for one dress, it was $500. Mm -hmm. Don't you think you owe her compensation for her work? Well, she told me that, you know, she was really, really generous. She was giving, like, adding a lot of stuff, and I believe that I don't owe her because she offered to do that. <laughs> it sounds stupid to you. Okay, I know. It sounds stupid to you. How much did you lay out for her for her wedding? In the receipts that you have for me, how much did you lay out for her for her wedding? Thirty-two eighty-seven ninety-five. And when you asked her to be reimbursed for that money, what did she tell you? That she was going to pay some of it when she received her tax returns, actually her wife's tax returns, and also she was working overtime to pay me back. She also stated that she was going to be getting a judgment from a state farm check that she would be making payments and she did pay the $50 after she made a payment arrangement with me to pay $200 a month back and she did make the first payment of $50 and from that point she didn't make any additional payments. So we did work together, Your Honor, to try to sell the items that were at her sister's home. I requested both Kayla and her wife at the time to sell the items. They were sitting in her sister's garage in Stockton, where I do not live. Um, I did come down for two weeks to try to help sell those items. Were any of those items sold? Yes, they Did were. you get any money back from I those? did. How much? $106, and then I had to pay for shipping for those items. How much did you pay for shipping? $75. And the rest of the items are still in her sister's possession. Okay, Thirty-two twenty-six. How much did you pay for your wedding other than the plaintiff's participation? Um, 8000 Did you pay that? My mom paid for the venue, and then I paid for the other things. How much was the venue? 4000 So you paid 4000 You personally, and what about your wife? Well, we share our account, so it was from both of us. What about her $3,200? Just don't have it. Just didn't pay it. Okay. Anything else, Ms. Goodwin? No. 3226. Judgment for the plaintiff. This court is adjourned. She told me that a lot of the stuff was gifts. I don't have any more wedding woes. She did a great job with the wedding. She thought it was a gift. She's really, really gifted at that. Never gonna loan money to her again. That was a relatively easy case. I think even the defendant acknowledged, besides just relying on the goodwill of the plaintiff, she had no real excuse to not pay her back and makes our job. Levi Shaw is suing his parents, Davery and Nathan Celestine for the repair costs of an 18-wheeler truck. Court come to order. All rise.
Have a seat, please. Hello, Judge. How are Case you? number 2032, Shaw versus Celestine. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Shaw, these are your parents, is that right? Yes, they are. How old are you? I'm 26. Just the very broad framework of this case. You're suing your parents for money that you put into a truck that belongs to them. Correct. And they are counterclaiming for money that they say you owe them for balance of a dog they purchased for you. Mm -hmm. The truck that you fixed belonged to your parents. Yes, the agreement was... It, no, it the was truck that them, you yes. fixed belonged to your parents. And Correct. what I gather is that you would come into some money. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm is not an answer. Oh, yes, ma'am. And when did you come into that money? I never came into any money from them after I fixed Not the from truck. them. I didn't say from them that you mm -hmm. came into some money. Uh-huh. Uh-huh is not an I'm, answer. I'm sorry, yes, ma'am. I came into some so in want October. You to, in October, mm -hmm. you were not employed. I was employed. By I whom? Was trucking. Is that their company? No, I was working with them and their brother. So you were working with the family? Yes. Okay. That was in October. Yes, October of 2021. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh, it's not an answer. I mean, yes, yes ma'am, an I'm sorry. And how much did you come into? About $10,000 for the month of September and October. And then your father said to you, I assume, you should take some of that money and buy a 16-wheeler truck so that you... No, could... ma'am. Well, how did that happen, sir, that so, you got possession of your parents' truck? So it... Did you try to buy a truck on your own? Yes, ma'am, I did. Okay, in what month... Failed. Just a second. In what month did you try to buy a truck for yourself? January. January? of 2022? This, yes, ma'am. And tried to buy a truck so that you could have your own truck for long hauling and business. Yes, ma'am. And you went to a dealer and you found the truck that you liked, but you didn't qualify for financing. Yes, ma'am. Okay, and how much is a new truck? That truck, it was a new, it was a 2015, and they priced it at $60,000. 60? $60. Yes, ma'am. And you told your parents about that? Yes, ma'am. And ma there was a discussion that they had an older truck that wasn't running. It needed minor work. It that needed... That to me. Okay. So they said to you, it needs minor work. Was it running? It was running, but the diamond seal was cracked, so eventually the truck was just going to break down completely. Okay. So you took that truck with the understanding that you were going to repair the truck, and then what? To make money. But one... So you would repair the truck and then use it? Yes, ma'am. And you would keep most of the profits from using that truck? I mean, I'm trying to understand well, the, what the, the agreement, agreement was. The agreement was, my dad, Nathan, told me that the truck was only going to be worth $4,000 to fix, which was a diamond seal. It needs some bushings. It needs something for the exhaust pipe. Okay. And I was like, okay. But when the dude kept calling me for the truck, and he was like, okay, this needs to be done. This but you to took the truck into a mechanic? Yes, ma'am. And did they give you you an estimate? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Before or after they did the work? They gave me one before, but I don't have that estimate, but I have the one for after. You mean after they completed the work, they sent you a bill? Yes, ma'am. Well, that's not an estimate. An estimate, sir, is when you go in and say, here is a truck. I want you to give me an estimate of what it is to have it fixed. Mm -hmm. And they give you an estimate, and then you determine whether or not you want them to do any or all of that work, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I would never bring a truck into any mechanic or to any dealership well, when mechanic was, and say, fix it. When they was calling me, telling me additional problems that was wrong, I would call them, which I have my phone records that show that I was also calling them once the dealership called me to fix the truck. Well, because just a second. Because some stuff on the truck wasn't able, like, it needed a new gear, it needed new transmission was messed up on the truck. Just which a second. I All them. I want is what you're telling me, that your father told you to go ahead and fix those things each time yes. you got a call? Yes. Okay, so you would call and your father would not say to you, well, how much is that to fix? Well, yeah, he was, but I had already had a settled amount that I told him that I was willing to spend, which was 10000 Well, did you spend 10000 The truck was actually over 10000 I understand to fix but it, I but did, you actually they did spent... Have 10, you yes. actually spent the 10000 10900 to okay. be exact. to fix the truck? Yes, ma'am. And you have the truck? Yes, ma'am. And 
I think the truck was thirteen thousand to fix. Yes, ma'am. So you paid the additional three thousand dollars. Yes, ma'am. Now the truck is running. Yes, ma'am, it's running. It was running before, young. Know? But it's running now better because yes, there are yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Because We're not using it. Just a second. I can only hear from one of you. He said the truck is in use. You said no. It's not used. Or is the truck? No, young. I misunderstood what you said. I thought you was talking about the repair. You saying is the truck operable now? Yes, it's operable, but it's not on the road. It's not on the road. Who yes, cares ma'am. if it's no. not on the road? Oh, yes. The ma'am. idea yes, was he was supposed to fix the truck and supposed to be able to use the truck. Yes, ma'am. Is he able to use the truck? Yes, he's able to use the truck. Okay, great. When was the last time he tried to use the truck? He never tried to use the truck after it was fixed. He said that he no longer wanted to be a part of the deal to give him his money back. Okay. I have something. Now, when the truck originally got fixed in February, my dad came into town multiple times. It was one more piece that needed to be fixed, which was the ABS module, which if you get pulled over, they're going to stop you and shut you down completely. I don't know. And I told him, hey, we need to get that fixed. He came into town three times, and I asked him, hey, are you going to take the truck to the shop? Hey, are you going to take the truck to the shop? He said, no. And he's like, well, it don't have any insurance. And it was just a whole bunch of excuses why he couldn't take the truck to the shop. Whether he can or he can't, he says, and your mother says, you're able to use the truck. But I don't have a CDL, so I'm not able to drive it. Well, you didn't have that when you took it in anyway. Mm -hmm. To be fixed. But I didn't take the truck over there. He drove the truck to the mechanic shop. Whatever. I don't care who drove it there, but your agreement with him was you tried to buy a new truck. It was much too expensive. Your agreement with your parents was that you would take an older truck of theirs that needed a lot of work, and you took it into a mechanic, and the mechanic was going to fix the truck, make it operable, so that you would have an opportunity to use it and make money. Yes, ma'am. And so I'm asking you, now the truck is fixed to the tune of $13,000. When was the last time that you asked to use the truck that your parents said you can't? Well, I asked him, can I have his dad take the truck to get the additional piece put on? And he told me no, just to wait till he come into town. Okay. After the agreement that your son was going to pay the money, fix the truck, was your agreement with him that he could use it at will? I gave him a specific time. I'd like to hear what the specific uh, times were. The specific were. time was... Don't, let's make it up as we go. No, no, ma'am. I'm thinking straight to you. I'm gonna tell you just like it out to you. Levi Shaw claims his parents, Davery and Nathan Celeste, owe for the repairs of an 18-wheeler truck. Levi's parents are countersuing for the balance of an English bulldog. Was the additional piece put on the truck that he's talking about? No, ma'am. It didn't actually what? need that addition. It was an ABS uh, modulator, which on that particular model was a 1995 FLD Classic. On that particular model, you don't need that to reset the ABS light. All you need is a sensor that goes in the hub of the wheel. What I'm asking you is, your son said that you needed this one part. This is your business. Yes, ma'am. How much is that one part? This is a part that I never researched, so I can't tell you that, but according okay. to him... So Perhaps you, I didn't ask you anything. Perhaps you can tell me. The part was nine hundred dollars. That was returned back. It was never returned because they wouldn't let me return it because it's dealing with wires. So when I asked them, "Can I return it?" they said no. And I had a text where I texted her and I said, "Hey, they will not let me return this piece." Return what piece? It, the ABS module. So they will not let me return it because it's electrical and they do not accept returns on electric pieces. So is what you're telling me that you bought this piece for nine hundred dollars? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and that. It wasn't necessary. You didn't buy it from him. No, but I don't know if it was necessary, but what the mechanic told me and what you the You can't mechanic... tell me what the mechanic told you. Well, I'm just saying the mechanic told me No, you me can't it tell me what the mechanic told you. Well, all I'm telling you, Mr. Shaw, is you had an agreement with your parents to fix a truck mm -hmm. and then to be able to use it. And I want to know whether they have ever denied you the right, because that was the contract that you made. You never made a contract with them that you would take a truck to the mechanic and they would pay for the repairs. Mm -hmm. You never made that contract with them. You want me to say that that was your contract with them. They say the truck is operable now and that you can use it. When do you want to use it? Well, if they're willing to let me use it, then I want to use it as soon as possible. Okay, and you can drive the truck. No, I was going to hire a driver. Okay, and the truck now is not on the road, is that correct? That's correct. That's yeah, correct. Yes, ma'am, that's right. No, that's right. That's right, The yeah, truck is not right. on the road. No, ma'am, it's is not. Is what you said, yes, but operable. Yes, it's not operable. Okay, and after the agreement 
that your son was going to pay the money, fix the truck, and then be able to work at it so that he's getting some benefit from what he put into the truck. Yes, ma'am. Did you have an... Ag- I wanted to ask... I'm not looking at you. Okay. Did you have a discussion with him about how much of the time he would be able to utilize the truck, or was your agreement with him that he could use it at will? I gave him a specific time. Yes, ma'am. I'd like to hear what the specific uh, times were. The specific were. time was... Don't... Let's make it up as we go. No, no, ma'am. I'm, I'm thinking straight to you. I'm gonna tell you just like it to you. I gave him a specifically, according to him, about three months of when he probably needed it, you know, to get himself together. No, just a second. You mean he was going to spend $10,000 on fixing the truck and you were going to let him use it for three months? Well, Put your hand down. He, I'm well, not uh, talking to well, you. Well, as long as he needed it. I'm going to put it that way. As long as he needed the truck. Okay. So now that's better. Yes, ma'am. So that he can use the truck whenever he needs it and he's going to get a driver. I just want to know because we're going to have to memorialize all this in an order. What do you want? We had a driver. My brother was the driver. I don't care whether your brother was the driver or not. That was not the agreement that your husband said he made with his son. Yes, ma'am. He says he made an agreement with him that if he paid to have it fixed, he could use the truck whenever he wanted to. That's what your father says. No, that is not correct. Okay, that is not so true. when did you ask to use the truck? So in January, when I was getting the truck fixed, they told me 4000 But as the mechanic kept calling me, adding on stuff, I said, hey, I'm not about to pay all this money, and y'all telling me I can just use it. If I'm about to put all my money into it, I want the truck. And my mom was like, okay, you can do that. Because in January, they didn't what? make any money Just because... a second. So what you're telling me is what you said to your mother, I'm not going to put in all this money unless the truck belongs to me. Correct. Well, th- that's not unreasonable, Mr. Shaw. I can actually see that. You're spending $10,000 of your money and you want to be able to use the truck. Mm-hmm. And you want it to be able to not have it on a whim of somebody else. Yes, ma'am. How old is this truck? This truck is exactly 20... Two years old. How long have you owned it? I've owned it since I was 23 years old. Okay. So you've owned it since it was new? Yes, ma'am. Did you make a living from it? Yes, ma'am, I did. Good. Do you have any other trucks now? Yes, ma'am, I do. How many others? Just one other. I, I'm not no big scale company. I just got a, one other truck. Yes, ma'am. Can I see the title to the truck, please? To the truck we're talking about? Yes. I don't have that title with me. Why not? I was. <laughs> Under the impression that I didn't need to bring it. Okay. And according to you, the truck's not on the road now? No, ma'am, it's not on the road. Do you remember having a conversation with your son about, I'm not going to spend all this money unless the truck is mine? Yes, ma'am, I do remember that conversation. Do you remember where it took place? He was driving and I was at home. So it was over the phone? Yes, ma'am. Remember what month that was? January. January of 2022. Correct. Tell me what you said to him and what he said to you. I told him, I totally understand what you're saying. I said, let me talk to your daddy and we'll see what we could do, but... Great. As a parent, that sounds perfectly reasonable. And did you speak to your husband? Yes, I did. Did the two of you own the truck? He owns the truck. It's in his name, in Nathan's name. So you said, okay, that sounds okay. Let me talk to your daddy. You have to talk to the owner of the truck because now you're seeking to change the agreement. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And... After you spoke to your mother, did you have a conversation with your father about the ownership of the truck? Yes, we did. And tell me when that was and what was discussed. It was in January as well. And when I told him that, he said he totally agreed with me that if I put in majority of the money, that I can have the truck. Okay. I want to tell you certain things sort of ring true to me if... I were a young person and spending all my money for a business because this is the business that he was going to be in. He was going to hire a driver and he was going to take a certain amount to the profits. I could understand him saying to his parents, who now have a truck that they're not using because it's not on the road, I'm going to spend all my savings, it looks like, because the initial estimate was $4,000, but it kept going up and up and up and up and up. So... If I'm going to spend all this... Put your hand down. If I'm going to spend all this money, I'd like to own the truck. And in response to that, his mother said and acknowledges that she said, it sounds right to me, I'm going to speak to your father. And according to you, you spoke to your father and your father said, sounds okay. Yes, ma'am. So you went ahead and spent the money. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Put your hand down. This Yana, is not I don't a. Understand. This is not. Yana, dollars I care. I'd have made over a million dollars with truck. truck. That's ridiculous. I want you to stop it. Say, man. Hey, man. Okay. Okay. How can you tell me now, to stop on something going... I work blood, sweat, and tears on? He's going to take.
Levi Shaw, says his parents, Davery and Nathan Celesti, owe for the cost of repairs to an 18-wheeler truck. Levi's parents say he never used the truck, and it is still not fixed. I'd like to see the bills for the truck. Oh, uh, I have it on my phone. Well, what is that? These was the bank statements because at first they was countersuing for insurance as well. So I was showing bank statements where I had sent them money. So no, that's what these was yeah. for. But I have it on my phone, but I don't have it in the statements. Well, I need it. Here you go. Is that the f one final invoice? Yes, ma'am. I'd like to see it. And it also I have at the bottom where it says it needs the ABS oh, module. <sighs> Your Honor, can I see that as well? Yes. Well, so the entire amount is thirteen thousand dollars. Thirteen thousand and some change. And your father paid three. Yes, ma'am. This is not the correct invoice. What? She I got have the, the, original. the original invoice. Oh, fine, I'll take a look it's at yours. The invoice that was sent to me via, so by their email, which I can pull up their email as well. And it shows that it's paid on the back. Just a second. Yes, ma'am. It's the same thing as he showed me. But it has our name on it. Who cares? The ones that he showed you, it changed since then. Well, but let me ask you a question. No. Unless I'm missing something. No, 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 no. You're not questioning the fact that he paid $10,000 to fix the truck <clears> out of the $13,000 that the truck was. Are you questioning that? No, I'm not okay, questioning Okay, then that. I don't know what we're talking about. Okay. Let's go over this one more time. When your son said to you, you know, if I'm going to spend all this money, I want to own the truck, and your wife had the same conversation with you, right? She said, I got a call from Levi. Levi said if he's going to spend all this money, he really wants the truck, and she actually thought it was okay. And what did you say, sir? I said that I'm not going to sell you the truck. Why? I will let you use the truck. No, no. When did you say that? Because I have other children. Oh, and no, but your other children didn't put any money into the no, truck. No, no, I know, I know No, just a second. Your other children didn't put I any money into saying, the truck. I know what you're saying, but there's like... Hand a... down. He didn't okay. ask me to buy the truck. Okay. Yana. He asked, could he use it? Just a second. He was going to sell it to my uncle because when the uh, repairs got done, they actually didn't have enough money because I had 8000 saved up. They took 4000 of my 8000 to paid pay the... That you Yes, but they didn't have the money, so That's when they... You, you just... Mr. Shaw, Mr. Shaw... That's I don't expect you to talk to each other. I don't expect okay. you to talk yes, to him. Yes, ma'am, I understand. Very easy. I believe that you changed the contract with your son from a contract where he would pay for the repairs, which was supposed to be $4,000, and then you have the use of the truck to the fact that he was going to spend $10,000, which was all of his money. Put your hand down. I'm not... This 22-year-old truck that you've had since it was new was going to be his. And I am going to craft an order to the Department of Motor Vehicles to reissue a title in the truck to him. Do you understand? He's going to take that order. He's going to get a new registration for the car and a new ownership. Unless you want... Put your hand down. This is... This Your is Honor, not I don't a... This is not... Your Honor. It's not, I don't understand that. Well, I got I other children. Second, I got five me, other do kids. You want me, do you want me to and say it's slower? Your Honor. And I say, what about the 3500 that we put into it? You're absolutely right. Okay. But it wasn't 4500 it was 3500 35 I'm sorry if you didn't hear me well. Man, man, man. You are absolutely entitled to that. <sighs> Dude. I believe you are Dude. entitled to that. He put in Dude. 10 That's his truck. I, I, I may. Mean, Yana, I worked all my life with that truck. I don't care. I worked all my... Uh, I, I don't care. care. He's not going to spend his $10,000 on to, fix, made over to million fix your dollars truck. With truck. That's ridiculous. Hey, I want you to stop it. Say, man. Hey, man. Okay. Okay. How can you tell me now, to stop on we something going... I work blood, sweat, and tears on? He's going to take. I need a break. That's the judgment. I'm not entertaining your counterclaim. That's the judgment of the court. You get title to the truck. You can retrieve it as soon as you change the registration of the truck. However, in order to do that, you have to give your parents the $3,500 that they put into the truck. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. Your Honor, Good. what about we're this done. dog? Yeah. We're done. We this court is adjourned. We're done. We paying for this dog. We're... No, it's we're done. It's over. Okay. We're paying for this dog, and, we didn't... and he's it's not over. giving us nothing. It's... Let me explain something to you. It's the over. reason... It's Let over. me explain something to you. The reason that I'm not hearing your counterclaim is because the two of you were disrespectful and didn't listen to me. Oh, yes, you did. That's it. We're done. All right. My actions of my response to what she was saying is wasn't nothing being disrespectful towards her. I'm very glad she ruled in my favor. It was the initial, you know, the, the thought of giving up 
my hard-earned possessions. It was because I did try to work it out before we came to court, and they was like, no, we're not going to pay you nothing. I like, never would have thought in a million years to sue my parents, even though they, you know, my parents with my butt. But that was just something you had to go through back then. It saddens me. I'm in disbelief that my parents did that to me. I didn't think that they would do that. I mean, I'm not sure. I don't know his plans. I can't, can't talk that. If you do business with family, make sure you get contracts. You know, I sympathize with the plaintiff's position on this because modifications of contracts are supposed to be allowed when there's a change in circumstance. So it's not like he was attempting to change the contract every Friday or for no reason. He thought that it was going to be $4,000. It turned out to be $10,000 to fix the truck. And as such, he wanted a bargain for exchange. That's a lot more money than he initially intended. So that conversation makes sense to me, that that, that conversation between his parents, that I know we had agreed to this, but now with this new information, this is what I'm comfortable with. Is that okay? I think so. And I think that is a common sense exactly. interpretation of for, what happened. For a truck that cost 60000 20 years ago, to put in $10,000 to it is not nothing. That's a, that's a big investment. Well, it probably isn't worth more than that. And the condition that it was in before he had it repaired, mm -hmm. their position was unreasonable mm -hmm. because now they have a fixed truck that their child paid that for. That their child paid for. And with the animus between them, it doesn't seem to me as if he's going to get any benefit no. from the bar. Other Stevens for vet bills and pain and suffering after a dog attack. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Hello, Judge. Case 2139, Stevens versus Stevens. Thank you. You're welcome. Although your names sound the same, they're spelled differently, and you are clearly not related based upon this case. You live in the same general area. Yes. Okay. Could you step up? Tell me your name. Emily Ferringer. This is your daughter? Yes. How long have you been living in your house? Eight and a half years. How old are you? 22. Tell me what you do. I work at a bakery right now, and I'm a full-time college student. Where do you go to school? Idaho State University. You were out walking the family dog. Yes. I family was. has one dog? Just one, yeah. What kind of dog? It's a miniature schnauzer. Weighs about 10, 12 pounds? Yeah, around there, 15-ish. Okay. How old is the dog? He is nine. You've had him since he was a puppy? Yes. This case has to do with injuries that your dog sustained yes. and the payment of vet bills by the defendant, who you allege has two dogs unleashed that attacked your dog while you were walking. Correct. Him. Just one dog. One dog. One. One dog attacked our dog. You have a pit bull? Yes, ma'am. What color? White and brown. How old? She's five. Is that the only dog you have? Yes, ma'am. OK. Tell me what date you were walking the dog that this incident happened. July 26, 2021. Time? Around 8 p.m. Dark? No. Still light out? Yes, ma'am. Were you walking in the neighborhood? I was. I was walking down the sidewalk, and I passed the defendant's house, and I reached the end of the sidewalk. Your dog's name is what? Jax. On a leash? Yes, ma'am. Do you always walk the dog on a leash? We do. Tell me what happened. I was walking down the sidewalk, and I reached the end of the sidewalk. I was about to cross the street, and... Do you have a picture, a diagram? I do, I have this a diagram. Yes. May I see it, please? Oh, OK. There it is. Would you go over to the diagram so that you can point directly and I can understand where this happened? I was standing right here, and I noticed the dog come up on my left side. On your left side? Yes. Did you notice from where the dog came? It seemed to be out in the street when it approached me. So it didn't come from the defendant's house. It came from the street. Yes. It had been on the left-hand side of me. And then the pit bull latched onto my dog on its leg. What color pit bull? Brown and white. Was there any fighting or a scuffle before? No, ma'am. It just ran up to me, and it latched onto my dog's leg. And it picked my dog up and was yanking it around in the air, and it was very loud, and my dog was squealing a lot and crying out very loudly, so I yanked his leash so that I didn't have to bend down and get hurt myself, and I picked him up, and I ran back. So you home. yanked him up by his leash? I did. Okay. Did he have what kind of a collar on? A regular collar or one of those harnesses? We have both, so I'm not sure which one he was wearing at that time, but I believe he was wearing the collar. Just the collar? Yes. So you lifted him up by the collar? Yes. Did you see where the dog went? I do not remember. I think the pit bull ran back into the defendant's household. But you're not sure? I'm not sure. 
What did you do next? We took the dog to the animal hospital. Okay, you can go back now. Stand close to you. Sorry. Had you ever seen this dog before? I have. Where had you seen the dog before? I've seen the pit bull in multiple places around the neighborhood. I've seen it across- That same dog? Yes. I've seen it across the street in that across the street neighbor's yard. And I've also seen it in my yard. And it's also been next to my chain link fence before. Did you or you, Miss Stevens, ever have a conversation with the defendant about the dog being unleashed? I have not spoken to her at all. For how long have you seen her unleashed dog out and about? Probably about 10 times. Have you ever said anything to your mother about seeing this dog outside? I have. Okay. I'm listening. Yes, ma'am. May I show you on the... Absolutely. On the diagram? Thank you. Absolutely. Okay. First of all... No, don't tell me first of all. Okay. Were you there at approximately yes. 8 p.m. Yes, on I July 26th? Correct, I was. Okay, where were you? Show me where you were. I was right here. I was loading a fridge into my home. I had my dog right here in the middle of the driveway, chained to the fence, okay? She came from across the crosswalk here, because I have a witness as well to show. She came from the crosswalk with her dog in front of her. She came across right into my driveway. The dog went into my driveway, and my dog went up to her, and they began to fight. You're going like this. Uh-huh, yeah. You're going like this. I don't want you to go like this. Okay. So your dog was on a chain. Yes, ma'am. A chain that extended almost to the end of your driveway. Correct. So show me exactly with your finger. Okay, yes. Where, where you say this confrontation between the pit bull and the schnauzer took place. Right here, ma'am. Well, you're pointing to about a f Well, you, now you keep moving your finger. Right here. You know that I don't believe that your dog hasn't been out and about in the neighborhood. Unleashed. No, ma'am. I don't let my dog off a leash. We do have pictures of the dog as well, if you'd like to see those. Oh, do you? We yes. Do. You mean out and about? Yes. yes. Oh, I'd like to see that. Audrey Stevens claims her neighbor, Heather Stevens, owes for vet bills after her dog was injured by Heather's pit bull. Now you're moving your finger. So you're saying it's right at the end of your driveway. Yes, ma'am. Just That's... a second. It was up further five seconds ago. Okay, now my you dog could... was right here, yeah. ma'am. Yeah. The fight okay. occurred right here. Well, now your finger is at a different place, madam. Well, I'm just letting you know your finger moves up the driveway. Right, I'd say right here. Okay. Yes, ma'am. You know that I don't believe that. I know you don't believe that. You, Honor, you, know, you know that I don't believe that your dog hasn't been out and about in the neighborhood. Do you know that I don't believe that? I don't think she's lying to me that your dog's been out and about in the neighborhood. Unleashed. No, ma'am. I don't let my dog off a leash. We do have pictures of the dog as well, if you'd like to see those. Oh, Luke. do you? We yes. Do. You mean out and about? Yes. yes. Oh, I'd like to see that. And this is after. Shh, shh. Sorry. I don't care before or after. Yeah. She just said, I don't let my dog go out without a leash. Well, this is the injury. Ms. Stevens, these pictures belie the fact that your dog is out, leashed only. Do you want to see the photograph? Yes, ma'am, please. Yes, Your Honor, I do see that, but I was outside with my dog at that time. I don't time. care whether you were outside with your dog or not. You said your dog is never out without a leash. That's not true. That's not true. Were you a witness to this? Yes, ma'am. Be very careful. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. Tell me your name. My name is Karen Brennan. Are you a neighbor? No, I am a friend. A friend of whose? Of Heather Stevens. Go ahead. Well, on that day... On what day? On July 26, I was helping Heather with the fridge. With the, what? With the refrigerator. And I was approaching the driveway. Just a second. You were helping her with the refrigerator doing what? Bringing the dolly out so it can be moved. Bringing the dolly out from where? From the side of the house. 
And? And I looked over and I saw the little dog and it caught you my eye. You saw what? The little dog. And it caught my eye because every time before, and, and you know, anytime I put the dog out, Miss Stevens' dog, that, that little dog, if it was in the backyard, would continually bark it. Just a second. Did you put the dog out that day? No, I did not that day. But I recognized so the dog. So you did not put the dog out? No. That day? Not that day. Okay. What time did you get to Miss Stevens' house? Uh, Mid-afternoon. What's her dog's name? Lily. Was Lily chained to the fence all afternoon? When we were... <laughs> Was Lily chained to the fence all afternoon? That's either a yes or a no. When you were there. That's either a yes or a no. Was Lily chained to the fence all afternoon when you were there? You said you got there mid-afternoon. This happened at 8 o'clock. Was the dog chained to the fence all the time you were there? Yes or a no? No. Or I don't know. No. No. Where was the dog? In the backyard. Until what time? Until around 7, 7-ish or so. I don't know the exact time, but it was mid-evening. Okay. And what happened at that time when the dog was moved from the backyard outside of the backyard? Who moved the dog? We went to go get the refrigerator. No, no, no. Who moved the dog? Heather did. She took the dog from the backyard. Yes. Just a second. To the backyard, to the driveway, just to, to the driveway, because that's where she pointed out that the dog was chained to the driveway fence. Yes. When we came back from the... We went to go get the refrigerator. Just a minute. Well, you didn't tell me, so you left the house. Yes. What time did you leave the house? Mid-afternoon. It was like... What time? Approximately four or five. Okay. And the dog at that time was where? With us in the vehicle. So you had the dog in the car, so the dog was in the backyard. Yes. And then from the backyard, the dog went with you in the car. Correct. And then what? And then we picked up the refrigerator, and we came back, and then she had chained her. Okay. So from the car... From the car, the dog went to the fence, which is chained sort of midway up the fence, according to the defendant, sort of midway up the driveway. Correct. Is where she chained the dog. Correct. Is that correct? Correct. Then where did you go? And then I went to go get the dolly and bring it around so we could get the fridge Okay, out. and where did Miss Stevens stay? She was in the driveway. And it was when you were coming out of the backyard that you saw Miss Stevens in the driveway? Yes. And saw the little dog? Yes. She was in the driveway. Was she next to the dog? Go over there and point out where she was, would you, in the driveway? She was... A... She, Miss Stevens? That Miss Stevens, yes. Your friend? Yes. Was right in the middle of the driveway, near where the dog was chained? Yes. And show me where the defendant's house is, because you had been in the house earlier that day. Point on that diagram where the house is. Right here. Where it says defendant. Yes. That's the whole house. And where's the front door? Right here. Up there. And where's the porch on the front door? Right there. Okay. Now, that's not where she was. She was in the driveway. Correct. Okay. Now, go back. Now, I'm going to read to you what your friend, Miss Stevens, wrote and swore to in her answer. I was standing on the porch maneuvering the fridge inside, and I saw a little dog sniffing around and walking up my driveway. She said she was on the porch. Well, she was back she there. That's where she said she was, on the porch. I know the plaintiff's dog is a barker, since it has come to the backside of my property and barked at my dog through the fence. The dog walked all the way up the driveway to where my dog was. Now, you want to think back? Miss Stevens says she was standing on the porch. You were very certain she was standing in mid-driveway right near her dog. Which one is it? Well, we were trying to maneuver the fridge. No, 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 no. Which one is it? Was she on the porch, which is all the way at the other end? Yes. Or was she mid-driveway? Mid-driveway. She was mid-driveway. So Miss Stevens lied when she said she was on the porch. I didn't look at a police report. I listened it's to your... I listened to you. Yes, Your Honor. And I listened to your witness. Yes. And you and the witness that you brought told two divergent stories, two totally different stories. She was your witness. Audrey Stevens. 
is accusing her neighbor, Heather Stevens, of losing control of her pit bull. Heather claims Audrey's dog ran onto her property. So Miss Stevens lied when she said she was on the porch. That's what she says in her answer. I was on the porch when this happened. You understand? When, when I... Do you understand? Yes. Sit. Can I see your vet bills, please? Your Honor, I have a video of my dog. Can we present the video that I have brought? You mean for that day? Yes, ma'am. That... No, not for that day. No, not for that day, but just to show you that my dog is not vicious. Oh, what? That she <laughs> likes to play with little dogs. Clearly not on this day. She didn't like to play with other dogs. That dog is constantly barking at my dog in the backyard, and that's the only... My dog loves dogs. I have an obedient record. Miss Stevens, Miss Stevens. Yes. I want you to understand something. Yes, ma'am. Whether the schnauzer is a barker or not a barker, I told you, I didn't believe you when you told me that her dog was off leash. I didn't believe that. Either you or your witness lied. I don't know which one. So I'm going to have to assume it was your witness. Do you want me to assume it was your witness or you? So one of you lied. She says you were in a totally different place. She was coming out from the backyard. That's where she was. She had gone to get the dolly. You said you were maneuvering the refrigerator up on the porch. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> well, who was telling me the truth? You want to tell me? It was a very hectic day. It was a very happened. hectic day. Yeah. And I have photographs of your dog, despite the fact that you tell me that your dog is never off leash, always on leash. I have three photographs taken three different times of your dog being off leash. Now, there's no question that your dog caused the injuries to the dog. This has been going on for over a year in court. They dismissed it in criminal court. And there's a reason why they dismissed it. I... Just a second. Yes, You're going to try to tell me why they dismissed the case in criminal court? You have a document. I mean, I understand that they filed a criminal case against you. There was a criminal case that was dismissed, Your Honor. That's okay. That has nothing to do with this civil proceeding. You know, somebody may not want to put you in jail because you let your pit bull roam around without a leash. Somebody may not want to put you in jail, but you are clearly responsible for this dog's injuries. You are. If you have a pit bull, and pit bulls can be dangerous dogs, they can turn on a dime and cause serious injury. Pit bull lovers, I don't want to hear from you. I've been going through it for 25 years. Some of them are nice. Some of them are not nice. But when they're not nice and they turn, they have configurations that can cause a great deal of injury. One killed a woman who was babysitting for it. I understand you. you, do you so you I do believe, understand. I you believe, do. I believe, may I say something? I believe that a dog is how it was raised. Okay? I've raised that dog from a baby. She's not, she's never been mean like that. That dog that lives next door, which is Miss Stevens' dog, yaps at my dog every single day. She goes outside, yaps, 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 yaps at her. So what you're telling me is your dog... <laughs> so if what you're telling me is that your dog had the right to be aggravated because the dog yaps at her all the time, that's not a reason to let any dog, but especially a dog that has potential to cause injury, out without a leash, and you do that regularly, and you can't do that. Your Honor, can I also add that I did have a brief interaction with Miss Stevens on the day that it occurred, and it seemed like she did come out of the street with the dog. I don't believe she was in the driveway. She offered help for me. She did? Yes, before I went home. And Where was she? Interrupt, but I, we also have video of her acknowledging fault with the, the officer's body cam video. What is that? Um, they have a body cam on when he was talking to her when she said she's really sorry and she's going to pay the vet bill. Oh, may I see that, please? Oh, okay. And she jumped out of the car when she seen that little dog because I was getting ready to get in the car. And gotcha. Right on the corner here. Okay. So were they just across the street then? No, they were right here. They were just right here on yeah. the sidewalk. Okay. I'm, well, I'm going to pay the bill, I know, and whatever I got to do. Yeah, so she's down at the clinic now. It was a bite on her, on the shoulder, I think. On the shoulder? Yeah. Okay. And he, she was just protecting me. Cause sure. That's all. And I'll pay the bill. Now you're responsible And I want to apologize. So. Sure. I feel bad. I, I do feel bad about it. I do love dog. I'm a dog lover. And I do feel bad. And I believe she just said, the defendant just said that she was in the street when that happened. It was in my driveway that happened, Your Honor. I'm just saying 
We want to be honest. Was the dog, was your dog on a chain? My dog was on a chain, Your Honor. Another thing, I never got my side of the story added to that at all. It was all one-sided. The whole police report was one-sided, Your Honor. I didn't look at a police report, I madam. One right Just here. a second. I didn't look at a police report. I listened it's to your I listened to you. Yes, Your Honor. And I listened to your witness. Yes. And you and the witness that you brought told two divergent stories, two totally different stories. She was your witness. Yes. Easily confused, but she was your witness. And you should have prepared her better, consistent with what your answer was. Do you understand? Yes, Sean, I wasn't trying to... Very, very good. Okay. Pain and suffering, unfortunately, is not yours. If you had had injury to yourself, and I think that the law is a little crazy there, but we can't gauge pain and suffering for an animal. Anyway, your vet bills were $435. Your Honor, we just added that just because, you know... I understand. ...blatant disregard and, sh- and the dog's still out all oh, the time. Oh, no, excuse me. The total with tax was $441. Judgment for the plaintiff. Thank you very much. Thank you. This court is adjourned. It's been a struggle just because of how long it's been going on. It was a crazy day. The dog almost got to our dog's leg bone and broke it. Because the dog is always japping at my dog. It was pretty scary. So it surprised me that that happened. He was bleeding and everything. She's not vicious whatsoever. We ran him up to the hospital. The animal control never get in my house. I had a feeling that Judy would see right through her, so. I love dogs, and I felt sorry for the little dog. I'm happy about the settlement and how we got our money. I'm not even going to get on my soapbox with regard to dogs that are potentially dangerous. There's no question that this lady has a dog that she's had from a puppy, and the dog has never caused her any difficulty, but there's also no question that she lets that dog out without a leash. I mean, they had proof of different occasions of the dog out and about. After this happened. after this incident. After this incident. So you can, I think that's also a great lesson, that you can feel bad and be an animal lover and want to take care of the bill, but if you don't take any subsequent remedial measures to fix your bad behavior that caused this great deal of injury, then I don't really believe you that you feel sorry or that you're a dog lover because... Well, that's an, that's an interesting yeah. perspective. Yeah, I mean, you knew what you had to do to ensure the safety of the dogs and other people in your neighborhood, and you chose not to do that, so... After it had already yeah. had an incident. He's suing her former friend, James Sorensen, for personal training and a fraudulent investment. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Case 2125, Anderton versus Sorsen. Thank you. You're welcome. Ms. Anderton, your case against the defendant is twofold. First, you claim a loan to him in the amount of $10,000. And while he doesn't deny that you gave him $10,000, it is his defense that this was not a loan, but an investment in a project that went south. It went south because somebody conned him, and thus you were conned as well. Somebody took off with the money. The second part of your lawsuit is that Mr. Sorensen is a trainer of some sort, a personal trainer, fitness trainer, and you retained him to put you on some sort of a regimen of both diet and exercise. And you paid him in advance. He wasn't forthcoming with all of the training sessions he was supposed to give you. He came unavailable. You want a refund of some of that money. So the first thing I'm going to deal with in your lawsuit is the... $10,000 exchange of money. If I find that that, in fact, was a loan or was fraudulently entered into as a result of being duped and being a dope, then I'm going to give you back the money. Then I don't have to get to the training because that's the limit of my jurisdiction. Do you understand? I understand. Okay, great. How did you meet him? Um, I met him on a dating site, actually. When? Early June 2021. Did you date? We befriended each other. And after our first meeting, that is when I had, I had just come off of a ventilator of 10 days. I was a nurse, contracted COVID. He actually came to my home and said, I could really help you get back to where you were. I needed rehab. Okay, so after the first meeting, you were not dating? No. Is that right, sir? That's correct. And that was in June of 2021? Yes. When did you, Mr. Sorensen, tell Ms. Anderton about this investment opportunity? Uh, it was a, about a month in to... Uh, so where, four weeks later. Right. Four weeks later, you became close enough to discuss with her a business opportunity. Yes. And did you discuss this business opportunity with her in her home or over the phone? In her home. So I want you to tell me your version of exactly what you told her. So I had a friend uh, come to me and... You had a friend whose name is... Uh, his name is Scott. 
Scott what? I, I can't remember his last name. I don't believe you. Okay. If it's true, mm -hmm. if it's true that it didn't happen, if it's true that you can't remember his last name, it's because he doesn't exist. Oh, he does exist. Oh, sir, you didn't give all that money to somebody whose last name you don't know. I want you to understand okay. that. Then you're looking at me and saying I must have stupid written on my forehead. You don't look like a stupid man. Absolutely not. Yeah, you look like it could be a, a cunning man, but you don't look like a stupid man. So okay. if Scott doesn't have a last name, he didn't exist. I want you to tell me that's in my brain. In my brain is if you can't come up with a first and last name of somebody that you gave thousands of dollars to, he didn't exist. Okay, in your mind. Keep going. I'm not gonna keep going and dig any holes. I'm just telling you what, what, what the facts are. So. No, those aren't facts, sir. That's a fantasy. You know, you're not mentally challenged in any way, are you? No. I wanna tell you if I told my nine-year-old grandchild mm -hmm. who asked me for $100 because she wanted to invest it with a friend, I would say, what's the friend's name? I don't know. See, I'm not giving you $100 to invest with somebody whose name you don't know because I'm absolutely positive that if you said that to her, she would have said, well, what's this person's name? I want you to tell me now, Mr. Sorensen, what was the investment? It was for, it was for happy pills. It was for what? Happy pills. Don't look at me. Happy? Did you say happy pills? Yes. Okay, tell me about it. Tell me what you told her. You want to invest in happy pills. Yes. What she'd yes. say to you, she say to you, I'm a nurse, you know, so I'm an educated person. What's wrong with you? Okay, keep going. <laughs> keep going. I want to invest in happy pills. Right. Your friend, your friend Scott. So it a, yeah, it was a friend of a friend. His name was Scott. Okay. <laughs> and he introduced me to him and said that, hey, he he went. No, no, no. You mean Scott introduced you to somebody else? No, my friend introduced me to Scott. I didn't know his last name, but we knew that he was in the your, industry. Okay. So your friend introduced you to Scott. Yes. What's your friend's name? His name is John. <laughs> <laughs> I promise. Where does he live? He lives in Salt Lake. What's his telephone number? I have no idea what his telephone number is. Just a second, get out your phone and tell me what your friend's telephone number is. Everybody has their friend's number in their phone. I don't know what his telephone number is. Then you see why I don't it's believe not... you, sir? Do you, do you understand why I'm having a problem with your story? It's okay. Do you understand why I'm having... So, a friend whose number you don't this have is... in your phone wanted to introduce you to somebody whose name you don't know to invest in happy pills. And this is what you told her? No, I'm asking you a question. Is this what you told her? I have yes, a friend. Yes, this, this is what I told her. John, I have a friend, John, mm -hmm. who knows a guy, Scott, who has this company that's going to make happy pills. I just want to know if that's what you're trying to tell me that you told this woman. I am. <laughs> it's okay. I don't know why she would make up that story. That no, 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 gave no, me no, 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 no. She's not making up the story. You're making up the story. Okay. And if I'm wrong about this, I actually don't feel badly, sir, because then you're the dope that got duped. And later today. You devalued her car while you had it. Yeah, okay. You used the car for two and a half years that was running. It stopped running because the engine was blown. Yes. And then you stopped making the payments on it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs>
and they've gotten a good return. It was a for sure deal. He goes around and they, this is their festival project time. They make a lot of money doing this. What does he do? For supplements. Like, so he sells supplements. Yes. And it was his business. Mm -hmm. Did, uh -huh, not uh huh. That's yes. A, yes. Did he ever mention a guy, Scott, to you? No. It was his business. Yes. And he said that his parents had helped him out in the past had invested with him in the past. So now I understand a little bit better. I see the withdrawal for $10,000. So tell me why he needed a hard money loan. To buy the product to take to these uh, festivals and... Uh, sell them. Sell them, yes. Okay. So he needed it for product. And when did he tell you that he was going to return this money? Within a week or two. That it was a week or two of festivals. This was the busy season. He does this every year. And this is a for sure return. And if I did this much amount of money, 5000 this is how much I'd get back. If I did 10000 it would be a $15,000 return for me. And I'm like, wow, I could pay off my student loans. I could, yes, do a lot with that. OK, so to synthesize what you told me, he told you that this was an investment in his company. A loan. A loan, excuse me, a loan for his company for products so that he could go out, sell them for the next several weeks, Correct. and you would get a return of 15% on your money. 50%. So a 10... 50? Mm -hmm. Five zero? Mm -hmm. Sounds too good to be true. Yeah. I... It has nothing to do with the company. The Venmo transfer of $2,000 was to him in June? June 16th of 21. And a withdrawal of $8,000. Same day. OK. Now, where did you put that money, sir? I gave it to Scott. OK. <laughs> OK. I want to tell you, Mr. Sorensen, you have parents who gave you money? They have in the just past, not, not as not no, as no, you just say. You have say. parents not in, that gave you money? They did not ever give me money for my business, ever. What did they give you money for? Christmas? They never, oh, gave, they never financed for me for anything in my life. Okay. Nothing. Oh, then you lied about that. I don't know why she would make up that story that no, parents no, no, gave no, me. No, 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 no. She's not making up the story. You're making up the story. Okay. And if I'm wrong about this, I actually don't feel badly, sir, because then you're the dope that got duped. Oh, absolutely. I know. Then, I'm a dope just a second. Then if you gave not... money to John, to Scott, then you're the dope that got duped because they were your friends. <laughs> that's, that's all I have to tell you. I understand. That's all. Judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $10,000. We're finished. Thank you. This court is adjourned. I think it was. Uh... It was fair. I think that was a fair judgment. We both understood what we were getting into. No, not until after like three or four months, and I think he brought that up in fear of me going to the police. Time to part ways and definitely learning curves on both both ends. Don't do silly things. It was definitely a learning curve. I'm glad that, uh, you know, things, you know, happened the way they did. Something I'll never do again. I'd be a little more careful with your money and your investments, and don't trust everybody. I'm, so, I'm too trusting. I just find it very funny that his entire business plan, venture, business venture, was selling illegal drugs at festivals. That was the only plan. <laughs> that was the whole venture. There was no... Is that, that's really what he whether said. Whether it was Scott, whether it was John, whether it was... Oh, but that Joe. was the business plan. Happy, <laughs> that's Happy Pills. Thank you, by the way, for explaining oh, what that was yeah. to me. Um, I didn't understand it first either, but when he said, he said Molly at festivals, I like, I'm pretty sure that's illegal. I'm yeah. pretty sure that's not a business. <laughs> right. So I'm glad she got her money back. Me too. <laughs> Me too. It was a ridiculous. There was a couple dopes getting duped yeah. in that yeah, situation. Yeah, you're absolutely right. <laughs> Case 2107, Breland versus Chanel. All parties, please step forward. Kashana and Michael Breland are suing Kashana's stepdad, Harry Schnall, for car repairs and damage credit. Miss Breland, this is your stepfather. Yes. That's your dad. Yes. This is your claim. He needed a car because his car, which was an old Cadillac, was going in for repair. Your dad had bought you a car in 2018. Yes. And when he bought you this car in 2018, it was a 2013 car that you kept 18, 19, and 20? The vehicle? No. I had the vehicle from 2018 to July 2019. So just for one year? Yep, July in 2019 was when I made the agreement to um, give the vehicle to... Okay. You made the agreement to give it to your stepfather with a proviso because you were buying a new car, another car. Yes. According to you, that he would take over the payments on the car because there was a loan yes. on the car that you were paying off and that your father was a signatory on. Yes. And you have children, and I don't know why this car was no good for you anymore, but you said you got another car because of your children. 
Yes, I got another vehicle because I had an additional son and it just wasn't enough room for three kids. What kind of car is it? It was a GMC Terrain. It's an SUV five passenger, but um, I felt like I needed a little bit more room, so I ended up getting a seven passenger. That way I could have the third row. Okay. So according to you, the arrangement was he would take over the payments on the car and the car would be turned over to him as soon as the title, as soon as he finished making the payments on the car. Yes. Was that your agreement with him? Yes, that was our agreement. And he did make payments on the car in 2019, 2020, 2021. And according to you, he stopped making payments in 2022. What month in 2022? January 2022 was the last payment I received. As a result of which, both of your credits were at risk. He dropped the car off at some relative's house because the engine was blown. He had a tow to some relative's house and stopped making the payments. Yes, that is correct. Your stepfather says, well, that really wasn't the agreement. My Cadillac wasn't working. It was in the shop in 2019. And the agreement was, while the car was in the shop, I would use your car and pay you $225 a month for it. But as soon as my car was out of the shop, you would take the car back. That's what you say, sir. Yes. Yeah, yeah I would take it back until my car got fixed. And the only reason it took so long to get fixed because of the pandemic, you know, and... Why? People couldn't go into their garage to fix a car? Uh, yes, they probably could, but at that time, I really didn't have the money to go and pay for it, so I just... Well, that's, well, that's your problem. I understand that. Well, that's your problem. So the car was fixed, but you didn't have the money to go and pick up the car. No, it wasn't fixed. Oh. So I, I didn't have them fixed until I'd be able to get the money and then go have it fixed. Did you explain that to her, sir, when she gave you the car? No. See, in my agreement, thought I was going to keep the car until my car gets fixed and I would make the month of payment. That's what I had. Uh, I understand that, but what... Yeah. <laughs> I understand that, okay. Mr. Chennault. Yes. But taking your story, if my stepfather said to me, listen, I'll take your car... I have a car that's in the shop. I'll use it and pay for it while the car's being fixed. Not what? In my view, that would be, well, maybe it would take you two weeks. Maybe it would take you a month. Maybe it would take you two months. But it wouldn't take you three years. You are what I'm saying. My car wasn't in the shop. My car would broke down. And I told her, uh, I thought we had agreement to me make the payment on that car to... I get ready to get oh, you my told car, me that already. car fixed, but I didn't put it in the shop till, till I was able to put it in the shop to get fixed. You devalued her car while yeah, you had it. Yeah, okay. I you can. devalued the car. You got a car that was running. You used the car for two and a half years that was running. It stopped running because the engine was blown. Yes. So it was dead stop. You had to have it towed to somebody's house. Yes. And then you stopped making the payments on it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I hear what you're saying. Right. I think she had a lemon coat. She didn't have a lemon. You drove it for two years. Yes, but I just had got the oil changed in that car a month before the engine blew. And you drove it for two years. Yes. Well, then it wasn't a lemon. Kushana and Michael Breland claim Kushana's stepdad, Harry Schnall, owes for car repairs and damaged credit. Now, you know, you have to act not only responsibly, but it would seem to me morally, this is your stepdaughter. You've known her for a long time. Yes. She went out, based upon her agreement with you, she went out and bought another car. Yes. Does the other car have a loan? Yes. Well, now she's stuck with two loans, and one of them has a car that you blew the engine on. I made sure the man was up on that car. I think she had a lemon because... She didn't have a lemon. You drove it for two years. Yes, but I kept... Well, I just had got the oil changed in that car a month before the engine blew. I don't know what, why the engine blew. How many years did you have the car? Two years. And you drove it for two years? Yes. Well, then it wasn't a lemon. Okay. How much was left on the loan of the car? There is still $3,752.63 owed left on the vehicle. Okay, and where is the car now? It is parked um, at a relative's house. Your problem is the car is in your name. So you have to sell the car subject to this lien. You have to be able to get something for the car. Do you understand? 
Yes. What's the value of that car? Based so, on 80,000 miles, it didn't say in the papers, but around seven to 9,000. And what if it's in very poor condition? I have to look into Take it. Take a look and see, because this car so far is not running. Yeah. And it hasn't been running for almost now a year. Yes, that's correct. So at best, you can sell it for scrap. So you have to get the car and you can scrap it because nobody's going to buy it when they can't drive it. So Kelly Blue Book will not provide a estimate for poor conditions, vehicles that are not running or in poor condition. But for a fair condition, they say between five and 6,000. Well, this is non-running. I know. I've been so not I running for get, a year. I can't get an estimate for a non-running vehicle from Kelly Blue Book. So now, now I know what the parameters are. You want to tell me about the where this agreement took place with your stepfather? The agreement took place um, at the car lots because I was in the middle of getting a new vehicle, so we were at the car lot. So that was in 2019? July 3rd, 2019. So you went with him to get the new car? Yes. Oh, good. So tell me about the conversation. So I asked him, I was like, hey, do you think that... Because in order for me to get this new vehicle, they said that I had a, a debt-to-income ratio thing because I couldn't get a new vehicle with owing money on the other vehicle. So I said, hey, how does this sound? You're down a vehicle because the engine blew on your... Prior, uh, prior vehicle. How about I give you this car, you finish making the payments on it, and then I get my new vehicle. But in order for me to get my new vehicle, I needed a co-signer. So I said, how about this? How about you co-sign on this new vehicle for me? I, yes, my stepfather. You co-sign on this new vehicle for me. I'll make the payments like I always do. And uh, you just take over the payments on my GMC terrain. He said, okay, yep, we can do that because I need another vehicle. So he is the co-signatory on your new car? That, at the time, that was the vehicle that I had. I now have a different vehicle. You mean in 2019, you had yet another car? Yes. But I made sure that I paid it off and there was no effect to him by any means. Okay, because so I knew that, you know, it wasn't just in my name, it was in his name also. So I didn't want to, I didn't want to do that to him. So I made sure that not only did I pay the vehicle off, but I got the transmission repaired and then I sold it. So what does your father have to do with this case? So my father was affected because with the payments being late... The car was in my name also. Oh, so it was in joint yes, names, you and your daughter. Well, they were supposed to put it as me, the co-signer, but they put me as the... The primary. Exactly. Yes. Okay, all right. Have you been making the payments since January? I was making payments on it from February to September. And then what happened? I couldn't afford to make the payments anymore. I'm a single mom of four, four kids. So what happened? So it's behind now. Since, since September? Yep, it's behind since. September, October, November. So it's yep. behind three months. Yes. yes. Had they notified you that they want to repossess it? They, no. They haven't noticed. repo. They've given us options to try to save our credit after okay, they... Okay, I'd like to see what those options are. Did they send well, it to you in writing? No, Did they, they send no, you a letter? No, it was verbal on the phone when they called, and we were discussing other options that they may offer to Okay, so make what was this, the best so option worse. that they offered you? The best option that they offered was basically to come up with about $396 to pay to get the car note caught up because it was four months behind. The car note's $225 each month. So it wouldn't have gotten... No, no, no. So they didn't offer you a whole payout. They just offered you... To catch up. To catch up. Yeah. Right. Okay. But still, what's due and owing on the car is $3,752. Yes. yes. Okay. And when your stepfather agreed to that, did he say anything to you with regard to his Cadillac going in for service and he was going to just use it until his Cadillac got... No, Your Honor, that is incorrect. Okay. You remember going with your stepdaughter when she was purchasing a new car in 2019? Yes, I do. Did you co-sign that car for her? Yes. So, so far, what she says is accurate. Yes. And at that time, did you take her old car? Yes. Mm -hmm. I have no idea what you can get for this car. And you know how you relied on him to be a good guy and to do what he was supposed to do? Yes. I'm awarding you $3,752. That's for you to pay off the bank. Then I don't think you can find a buyer for this car. You may have to scrap it, right? Yes. It's possible that there's no point in fixing it. You're not going to invest thousands of dollars in fixing it when it probably is at best worth $5,000. And if it's going to cost you $3,000 to try to get it up and running, it doesn't thousand. pay. It doesn't pay. So I'm going to rely on you to do the right thing. It sounds as if you, you do that, that while I'm awarding you 3752 
whatever money you get for the car goes to him. Do you understand? If you scrap it for $70, he gets it. I don't see that it's worth much more. I certainly wouldn't invest in a car that's been sitting dead for a year with a blown engine. Judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $3,752 with it. This court is adjourned. I think it was pretty fair. I think it was very fair. My agreement, though, I paid for the car until I get my car fixed. I've tried multiple times to reach out to him, and I couldn't get a hold of him, so that, it's really sad that I had to, it had to come to this. He had to do what he had to do. That's all I can say. I've learned that you can't help anyone, can't help, not even family. Time to move on. Go on about my business, yes. I'm a nice person, so I guess you just sometimes can't be nice to everyone. You know what's so disappointing? She seems like a very lovely young lady. Her father seems like a nice man. He had actually helped to purchase the father, the first car, and I think co-signed a loan for her or bought her the car in 2018 that she then turned over to him. But he's been her stepfather for a long time. How could you be so irresponsible? And you know she's a single parent mm -hmm. of four children who relies a lot on her credit. Right. And her credit on, on her, her car. Credit. And a car. And she's maintained her credit. Yes, yeah. except for the fact that her stepfather sort of yeah. ruined it for her yeah. a little. He really didn't have a defense. No. I don't think he had a defense. I don't think that you borrow somebody's car until your car is fixed three years later. <laughs> Sister, Kelvis Bentley, for moving costs. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Hello, Judge. Case 2106, Bentley versus Bentley. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. Miss Bentley, this is your sister. Yes. The case is relatively simple. Your mom passed away a couple of years ago. There was a house full of furniture that belonged to your mother. According to what I've read, and this is broad strokes, according to what I read, your sister, what's your first name? Calvis. Put your mother's property in a storage unit. Excuse me. It was already in storage. Who had put it into storage? My mom put it in storage. My mom was terminally ill and she put it in storage three months before she passed away. Is that correct? Yes. On what date did your mom pass? November the 8th, 2018. So it would have been in storage since August of 2018. Correct. From August till November, who paid for the storage unit? I have been paying it. And how much is it every month? Right now it's 209, but it was 182 in the beginning. But about $200 a month and it's been three years. Yes, I've been paying that every month. This is what your case is about. You say that you gave your sister $900 for the purpose of traveling, getting your mother's things out of storage so that you could all disperse your mother's property. Yes, but the amount is incorrect. How, what's the amount? I gave her $800. Okay, $800. Yes. In order to get your mother's furniture to where you live uh -huh. so that you could separate the furniture and the family could take what they wanted or needed of the property, correct? That's correct. Good. Then COVID struck, your sister didn't use that money to travel, to hire truckers, to move the furniture, and you want that money back. Yes, that's correct. Th that's the whole case, okay. Just for my own information, you do expect when that furniture arrives to be one of the beneficiaries of that furniture. That's what your sister says. She says that that's the plan once it all comes back. That's not correct. I didn't want anything out of the storage but pictures. Pictures? Yeah. Well, pictures of things. Yes, that's, that's it. Pictures of what? There's a picture of me and my mother. That's all I wanted. Did you tell that to your sister? Yes, I did. Did she? No. How many sisters are there? It's only two of us now. It was four, two deceased. Did your mother have any other property? My mother has a whole two-bedroom home in the um, storage. She has furniture, everything. Other than furniture? No. Clothes, well, clothes, pictures, yes, things like that, yes. Is there any property in that storage unit that you want? Well, I'm holding her stuff because it's sentimental. I mean, I can get it, you know. I, you know, I wouldn't mind having it, but it's really... She got a lot of sentimental stuff in there, so that's why I've been... Being, furniture? Yes. Furniture, clothes. Furniture. Pictures, everything, you know. Okay. Yes. How far away is the storage unit from where you live? It's in Charlotte, North Carolina. How far away? 10-hour drive. Uh, we stay in Michigan, and the storage is in North Carolina, Charlotte. Anybody that you know live there close to the storage unit? My aunt and my cousin does. And this picture that you want, do you know where it is? It's in the photo album with the rest of the pictures. And other than that one picture, in a photo album, you don't want anything else, any of the other property? No. You two are the heirs, is that right? We have a brother. 
does he have, as far as you know, any interest in any of your mother's property? No. When my mom passed, it was me, my niece, and my older brother there at the time of death. And so he got everything he wanted out, and he gave me the key because I was the next to older one because she wasn't there. So he was like, so y'all do what y'all want to do with it. And so that's when I told her, when I'll pay it until we go get it. You said, I'll pay for the storage unit mm -hmm. until we go and get it. Yes. Okay, now I'd like you to tell me about this money that she gave you. Do you remember when she gave you the 800? She gave me the money, I want to say, May of 2020. And can you tell me what the conversation was when she gave you it the was, money? It was, here is some money to go towards going to get the things, you know? And so I told her, well, I'll find a way to go get it. I didn't never give her a designated time, but during that time, that was COVID, so no one was able to go. And so I was going to go this year because I just signed the papers to go and go get the stuff, but no one still was able to go. She never once said that this was money loaned to go get it. She no, just, no, no, oh, I'm sorry. no. She had oh, yeah. designated it to right. go and get the yes. property. Yes. And you didn't use it to go and get the property. I used it towards the storage. No. I'm sorry. Go I, ahead. No. The answer no. is no. No. So that's what her complaint is, okay. that it wasn't used for its intended purpose, which was to go rent a truck, right. movers, and bring the property to yes. where you both live. Mm -hmm. Okay. And she did give you $800. Yes. Okay. And, Ms. Bentley, you're prepared to sign a document that indicates that the only property you want from storage is a photograph of you and your mother that's in a photo album. Yes. That you want nothing else, that everything else belongs to either your sister or any other heirs that have a legitimate claim on any of that property, but you want nothing else. That's fine. Reasonable? Fine. Perfect. <laughs> oh, I'm entering a judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $800 with the proviso that the plaintiff will, in fact, sign that document indicating she wants nothing but one photograph from the storage unit. I gave her 150 back. Did she give you 150 back? She did give me 150 okay. back. You paid her back. So she goes you 650. Mm -hmm. Judgment for the plaintiff, 650. Thank you very much. Thank you. This court is adjourned. It, it was my mother's stuff. I just was trying to get the stuff. It was in storage for long enough. We haven't talked in the whole year. We're not close. You know, all she wanted is the picture. I give her a picture. At least I got what I wanted. We still sisters. Still love her. Those look like two nice sisters. Mm -hmm. And I think part of that problem is the intervention of COVID, which really turned everybody's life upside down. Especially family units. Family units, because I think that that was the intention, that she was going to pay for it mm -hmm. to all be brought up, use that money, and then they would go through the property and decide who wanted what and what would be disposed of. It's not an egregious case of misappropriation of funds. All well-intentioned, I think. Well-intentioned. I thought it was a sweet case. Case 2111, Banks versus Mitchell. All parties, please step forward. Queen Vanessa Banks is suing her former friend, Fulton Mitchell, for an unpaid loan and stolen money. Ms. Banks, what kind of work do you do? I'm a city contractor for the city and county of San Francisco. How long have you been working for the city of San Francisco? 30 years. You a full-time employee? No, I'm a contractor, so I'm used as needed. Well, in the last month, how many days have you worked? like around 40 hours the whole month. How do you support yourself? I'm on disability. How long have you been on disability? Since roughly like around February of 2022. When you applied for disability, were you originally rejected or did they accept your claim? I was rejected three times, actually. So when you started collecting in February of 2022, you got a big check for back disability. Yes, ma'am. I know my business. How much of a check did you get? I got um, think... 7000 the first time, and they just submitted me like 8000 a month or two ago, and then there are some more coming. It ain't all came yet. Mm -hmm. They advised you, because you were rejected, as you said, two or three times, that there would be a total amount coming to you. You got a letter from the administration. Yes, ma'am. Yes. And what is the total amount that they told you you would be receiving in increments? I think it was like 18000 And you had a lawyer at the appeal? Yes, ma'am. Now, when you applied for disability, did you say that there was no kind of work that you could do? I'm jaundiced. I know that people put money in somebody else's bank when they want to hide it from the government, creditors a spouse looking for support, all what I would call nefarious reasons to put money in somebody else's bank.
Queen Vanessa Banks claims her former friend, Fulton Mitchell, stole money from their shared bank account. Now, when you applied for disability, did you say that there was no kind of work that you could do? Well, actually... No, no, not actually. They're giving you $18,000. They said that they should have taken your case when you first applied for disability. So they had to have found that you could not hold gainful employment. That's what it's all about, when you get federal disability. Right. Right. So I want to know what this 40 hours a month that you worked last month as an independent contractor, what kind of independent contractor were you? I actually sit on Zooms, and I am a consultant, so I'm, I'm on Zooms most of the time. And when you're not on Zooms, where are you? At home. What do you consult about? I am an urban consultant, so I work with various people that's trying to find out about urban living and mental health, basically working around mental health. How are you paid? They might. Mail no, a not check. might. They mail a check. What do you do with that check? I usually cash it at a a store in the community. You cash it. What is your hourly wage? As a consultant? Yeah. I'm usually paid like one thirty an uh, hour. And what's the amount of money you get from disability a month, not counting these extra payments for when they denied you disability? A thousand dollars. So you get a thousand dollars a month plus $130 an hour times the last month you said was 40 hours. So you make four five thousand dollars a month from your consulting job for the city no way. well am i correct whitney that miss banks said that she worked about 40 hours last month can i explain something not no. all no she said around 40 hours the whole month okay would you tell me what she says she earns an hour it's usually 130 an hour fifty two hundred dollars and when you get the checks for these consulting things you take them and you cash them that's yes, either a yes ma'am. or a no. Do you work as a sole independent contractor or do you have an LLC or a corporation? No, ma'am. So the checks are made out to you? Yes, ma'am. As an independent contractor? Yes, ma'am. You have to pay your own taxes, so you're 1099 from all these people? Yes, ma'am. What did you declare on your taxes last year? I didn't file taxes last year, ma'am. Why not? You said you've been working in this capacity on and off for 30 years. Because, for ma'am, the city. where I come from, a lot of the work is volunteer work considered. And you are given a stipend. And some of the work I do, sometimes I don't even get paid, but I still do I'm the not, work. Listen, you know exactly where I'm going. We're two savvy people. When you cash those checks, because this is what the case is about, for some reason, because I'm trying to figure out why somebody puts money into somebody else's bank account. Because part of this case is about that. You and Mr. Mitchell became friends, maybe a little bit more than friends, I don't know. At some point, according to you, you gave him money to hold in his bank account because his bank account was closer to where you are and you didn't want to go on two buses to where your bank was. Am I getting that right? Is that No, what you... no, ma'am. Let's see. I'm telling you why I made these inquiries to you. I was struggling to find a way to get access to my money. I always took the bus to the bank, but during COVID, public transportation shut down or was completely unreliable, and I was in a bind. This is what you write. When Fulton heard about my problem, he offered to hold my money for me in his bank. He said that he didn't keep any money in that account, so it would be perfect, because his bank was right where I worked. I only know of several reasons why strangers put money in somebody else's account. You know, I may have an account with Sarah. I may have an account with one of my other grandchildren. I have an account with my husband. But I've had a best friend for 70 years, another best friend for 30 years, and I would never think of putting money in their bank account because there are banks all over the place. I'm just telling you, you know, I'm jaundiced. I know that people put money in somebody else's bank when they want to hide it, when they want to hide it from the government, creditors, a spouse looking for support, a spouse looking for alimony, a contractor who has a judgment against them, all what I would call nefarious reasons to put money in somebody else's bank. But let us say that you did put money in this bank account, and you say that money was withdrawn. Your money was withdrawn from that account to pay his taxes. 
Is that what you're alleging? Yes, ma'am. Okay. How much was withdrawn from his account that only his name was on? Or was your name on it, too? My name is on it, too. Oh, there we go. Now, I can understand it, why you might owe taxes. I don't know anything about his business, but I can certainly understand that you might. Did you receive notice that the IRS took money out of this bank account, which was then a joint bank account? No, I did not. So if her name was on it, it was a joint account. Uh, it was not. It was my account, and I added her name to That's my okay. That makes it a joint account. Yes. Okay, well, I didn't have that information in here, because joint accounts is absolutely different. Joint account means that the money belongs to both of you. Now, what makes you think that the money that was taken out of the account was to pay his taxes? Because I have proof. Your I'd Honor. like to see it. What account is this? Whose money is that? Mine. Explain that to me. This is a deposit here for $988.68. What is that? That's when the pandemic hit and the struggle started getting hard trying to get money. And Ben and me and him was business partners. That's when he decided to try to help me out. You know, I neither have the time or the interest to hear about the nuances of this stuff because I don't have the wherewithal, either emotionally or structurally, to figure out the whole scam. I haven't figured it all out yet, but I'm beginning to figure it out. So you deposited 988 and then withdrew at some point in May. That was on June 9th. I don't have the rest of it here, but you withdrew $1,600 from that account on May 25th. Do you remember what that was for? The 16th? May 25th? Yeah. May 25th, $1,600, June 3rd, tax levy, 2711. The May 25th is because that's my daughter's birthday, and I spent time with my daughter. And then the June 3rd tax levy is why I'm here with you today. What kind of business were you in together with the defendant? You want me to what? answer that? No, you answer it. What kind what of... type of business were you together? He works for the city and county. I'm a grassroots organizer, so I work within his organization so that we can do things together. That's not true. Your Honor, I have proof. I do work with his organization. I'm putting on a Just Halloween a event. I don't, I don't Here's care. His logo let, let, let's understand each other. I don't care because something doesn't smell right for me. And if something doesn't smell right with this nose, it's usually accurate. Usually. You said you took out $1,000. When and for what purpose? I took out the $1,000 and I gave it to Ms. Banks. That's not what you said. What did I say, Ms. <laughs> <laughs> it's not what you said. It's not what you swore to. Queen Vanessa Banks is suing her former friend, Fulton Mitchell, for an unpaid loan and stolen money. When someone puts money in somebody else's bank account, it's because they're trying to somehow shield that money from some sort of scrutiny. If your only source of income, which you would like me to believe, is this $1,000 from disability and the $18,000 that you're going to get for retroactive she disability. Some, she was on some other kind of services also. I don't know whether it was SSI or something. When she first came to me, she wanted me to hold the money and put it in my account because she didn't want it to mess up That's her money. That's not true. That's not true, Your Honor. He started helping me in 2019 and 2020. He asked me for a loan to help one of his daughters of $1,900. We were both trying to start up a business. We didn't know the pandemic was going to come, Your Honor. We was trying to start up a business. I've never tried Men, to start up a business. Just a second. Your Honor, I got proof, because he lying to you. Just, no, just a second. I don't care that you were starting a business. So we was... It doesn't make any difference to me. It really doesn't make any difference to me. You had a joint account, and the IRS took money out of that joint account. Was that your tax debt? I don't it, know. You, the answer is you don't know. I, I, it's... Okay, well, this says that it was the levy from California Franchise Tax Board was against Fulton W. Mitchell. That's me. Th that's what it's... I asked her to show me that. I said, prove it oh. to me. No, she never showed yeah. me that ever. Okay. So my question to you is, sir, because, of course, you have to pay your own taxes. Yes, ma'am. Right? You would acknowledge that this bank account had only her funds in it? 
No, I had my funds in there too. Show me any deposits that you made into this account. Well, I had money in there way before I put her money into my account. It's been in my account for over 10, 15 years. What I want to see, Mr. Fulton, yes. is any place where you deposited 27 11 because that's what they took out. No, I didn't deposit 27 11 into that account. Ever? No. no. Okay, good. This responsibility is yours. You would acknowledge that yes. it's yours? Yes. Okay, so that's $2,700, which you, in fact, owe her. She probably owes IRS or the state of California more money because I'm not sure that they know where all this money is going. Did you take any other money out of that account? No, ma'am. Yes, you did. You took out $1,000. You acknowledge well, you took out $1,000 by accident, you said, sir, and you said you paid it back. She got it back. Okay, well, that's then don't true, say... Honor. Shh, don't speak. You got into enough trouble, right, so far. You said you took out $1,000. When and for what purpose? I took out the $1,000 and I gave it to Ms. Banks. That's not what you said. What did I say, uh, Ms. Jones? <laughs> <laughs> It's not what you said. It's not what you swore to. You said, there was a time when I accidentally withdrew $1,000 from the account that belonged to Vanessa, but I paid her back in June 2022. There you go. I said, what do you mean, there you go? I said, when did you take money out of her account? That was the only time I took the money out. Well, tell me about it. Vanessa started harassing me. She started showing up to my job and just doing all kinds of stuff, so I was just trying to get rid of her. And? I, so I took the money out and gave it to her. And I'm... Just a second. Put your hand down. Don't you understand what you signed? Yeah. You said, I accidentally took money out of her account, but then I gave it back to her, because if you accidentally took it out, it means it didn't belong to you. When did you accidentally take it out, and when did you give it back to her? I took out the money, and the money was given to her. That was it. I didn't... I, that was it. I was done with it. What? I was done with her. I was done with, with all of it. There was a time when I accidentally withdrew $1,000 from the account that belonged to Vanessa, but I paid that back that, in June 2022. Those words are, are, are mixed up a little bit there. That's what I read. That's your answer, sir. As for the rest of the money she claims I owe her, it's all a bunch of lies. I never took a $1,900 loan and don't owe money for the IRS. Well, you do owe money for the IRS because one of the things yeah. I think that everybody has to pay is their own tax levy and their own child support. You would acknowledge that. I agree. Okay, tell me about this loan of $1,900, Ms. Banks. Mr. Mitchell had fell into a lot of hardship in the pandemic, and he came to me and asked me, could I loan him $1,900 to help out one of his daughters? And I gave it to him, and he agreed to pay it back, and we was just, like, trying to have no business together, so... And I thought he was a friend. Show me proof that you gave him $1,900. It was cash, Your Honor. The $1,000 he said he handed me back in June, that was from the 1900 I'm not following you, madam. Are you saying that he in total owed you, forget the IRS, $2,900, $1,000 that he took in 19? He asked for $1,900 in cash. Never asked for $1,900. I gave him $1,900 in cash. Not true. Then he paid me back 1000 in June of 2022. Okay. You have money in my account. Why would I ask you for $1,900? I would just go in there and grab it. That makes no sense. Just a second. Why are you talking to her? I'm sorry. Where do you think you are? I'm sorry. I apologize. She's never given me no $1,900. She's never given me anything in cash, period, ever. I have proof. I'm willing to look at yes. it. Yes. I told him that I needed to move forward with it, and if he don't give me what I need, I'll put it in writing. So well, you may put it in writing. Well, you sent this to him. And it says acknowledgement of monetary debt in the amount of $4,600. You typed this up, and he never signed it. No, he never okay. signed it. Well, then it's meaningless. You can type up anything. I can type up something that says I own all of Sarah's real estate. If she doesn't sign it, I don't own anything. Well, that's what okay. $1,000 came from, because he was trying to cover that. Yeah. You know, somehow I think I'm dealing with, I'm not sure about one or two people who've managed to master the system. And no, not also, at all. I've never, well, I don't know. I've never I don't know. All I know is if somebody is working... Five years just a second. Hey, just a second. There's a reason why she asked to be added to your bank account. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. You don't look... Because if you're a foolish man, what was the reason she gave you for wanting to have a bank account where you were the primary on that bank account? What was the reason she gave you? She gave me the reason that she didn't want it to mess up her income. That's not true. Just a second. So she said, I don't want it to mess... She said she didn't want to put it in her name because she didn't want to mess up her income that she had coming in. 
her income from what? Some kind of assistance. I'm not sure exactly yeah. what it was. Whatever. Anyway, got a nice windfall, $18,000. By the way, I have one other question for you. In your complaint, which you read and signed and swore to, Fulton heard about my problems with money and where to put it, and he offered to hold my money in his account. He said he doesn't keep any money in there, so it would be perfect, because his bank was right where I worked. Where was his bank, and where do you work? I work, I work in the community that I was born and raised in, which is Bayview. Okay, I'm not going to get a straight answer. You owe her for her tax debt, nothing else, $2,700. This court is adjourned. That's it, you're done. I'll watch her, like, Every day. Um, it was fair. I'm thankful that she saw what it was for what it was. You know, she asked me to put some money in the account for her. I did. I never had to harass him. We were business partners for three, two or three years. I don't know if it was a business agreement or not. Because I told him I want my money. I'm just happy it's over with. You know what I was thinking about? I was thinking that I wouldn't have had that information about Social Security disability unless Poppy was an administrative law judge with Social Security 40 years ago. And I Let remember rest. exactly what the drill was. File, you reject it, you file, you reject it, and finally Secret. you have to hire a lawyer, yep. and the lawyer gets a big chunk of the relief and you get all your back payments. Yep. So I have a feeling I was dealing with two people who had a substantial skill set in how to negotiate and 